Welcome, everybody. January 5th. Happy New Year to everyone. This is Fat Guys on a Little Podcast, and your co-host, Steve Markey, and always joined by... Charles here. And we got... That was a solid intro, by the way. What? Were you working on... Your intros have been dog shit the last <laughs> month. Now, all of a sudden, you're, you got the date and everything yeah. in there. Wow. <laughs> Get a little better. Yeah. Uh, so, this year, we're going to start off with a lot of protein, not animal protein, like someone yeah. else we might know. Yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs> so, we are going to try some protein, we're going to talk about the New Year, and then... Of course, I didn't get to watch a lot of stuff this week. A lot of bowl games I was watching. I don't know why. They weren't it's good. Been, I tell you what, though. It's been kind of nice having it. I don't like the format, but I can respect the fact that there was like an, a game on every night. It's yeah. been kind of cool. Yeah. Even though some of them are trash. But... And there's even a couple coming up like the next day or two, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, yeah, it's weird. So, yeah, I think Monday night uh, there'll be another one. And then, yeah. of course, next Monday will be the championship game. And we'll talk about that. And we'll Clemson LSU, for those of you who don't know. All I've learned with all our bowl picks that we should never run a sports book. Yeah, where does it, where does it lie right now? I know uh, you're spoiling a later segment. But. Bill is in the lead 20. Uh, you and I have 17. Gabe has 15. Oh, wow. Well. Basically, the battle's for second place because we're not catching Bill. There's yeah, only two games BV's left. We're, we're down with. by three, yeah. And he was complaining, uh, but we'll cover that later. Uh, I'll tell you what he's complaining about. But first, did you on the New Year's Eve, uh, first off, Happy New Year 2020. Yeah. New decade. New did decade. you make it to midnight? I never do. I haven't <laughs> been to I haven't been to midnight on New Year's, and I couldn't tell you how long since I probably worked midnights years ago. Oh, it's not my thing. I'm not a drunkard like that. I mean, I, I only recently started drinking two years ago, and I barely do. So, yeah, yeah. I it's not my thing. I have a young daughter, and a lot of times I got to work New Year's Day. So, but and I I put this in the show notes. Netflix did a really cool thing. So the past few years. We were able to do like a countdown as a family. We get like some sparkling grape juice and have Lorna yeah. together, and nine o'clock is midnight in the Marky household because we go to bed, right? <laughs> so Netflix has these cool countdown things that are like countdown to New Year's Eve, but they didn't do any new ones this year. So like they abandoned doing it. I don't know if my family was the only one doing them or something, <laughs> but it was really cool to do because it would be like themed to their Netflix shows and stuff like that, right? But they they were all old ones, and I was like, okay, this is kind of annoying, but you know, mm. nonetheless, sparkling grape juice. That's what we had. We had that, and Holly didn't like it. Uh, Why? Maybe she won't be. Uh, She's just obnoxious. Why she hates yeah. everything? I know. I can't wait till Lorna gets to this age. Uh, we had just sit- everything. So- it's just grape juice. I mean, yeah. a rather healthy dinner today. It was it was a, a vegetable tray with uh, hummus. I don't like the hummus though, uh, and, and a rotisserie chicken. And then Michelle bought. It's called cauliflower rice. She will not let go of this cauliflower. Yeah, no, she just is oh, cauliflower rice is, is really chopped up cauliflower. Yeah. That's all it was. Just, Holly takes one bite. Yeah, and we're like it. <laughs> it's like you didn't even barely. Oh, oh okay, it's so annoying. And I'm not the hugest fan of cauliflower either because we've tried it. Yeah, you podcast. guys are shoehorning it into a lot of stuff. Uh, no, not you guys. It's Michelle. Yeah, wow. <laughs> she, she loves it for some reason. And I mean, it was okay, but it was just whatever. But yeah, so she hates everything. So, mm-hmm. yeah. so speaking of that, yesterday, what she doesn't hate is her friends and going to the mall. We went to Great Lakes Crossing here in Michigan, and it's, yeah, you sent me a text. Where were you at? Like a pool hall there or something? They what have like that? a poor man's Dave and Buster's there. It's like okay. a big arcade. So they had like four pinball machines. They got pool tables. They it got, looks clean and empty. I was like, Jesus, yeah, I don't know where we, Steve's well, we, at. We got there about ten thirty, and so there was nobody okay. in there. It filled up probably around two, three o'clock. We, you guys were there that long? Well, no, it, it's connected to the mall, so we we're wander there. Wander and wander out. You kind of did. Yeah, or? when we first get there. I saw the pinball sent you a picture, and then we go shopping, eat lunch, finish the shopping, and then about two o'clock we made it back in. Oh, okay. Uh, and then we spent an hour, and uh, but the, I'm gonna tell you. So she took both her friends. So this is the phases. What of are her, her friends? Who are this is Bree, Bree and Fatima, okay, Fatima, yeah, whatever this is you the call two it. we always hear about. Yeah, okay. oh, the, her her ride or die homies. Uh, okay. So they're in the back of the truck, right? The two of them, the three of them. You didn't make her drive. No. Oh, okay. Uh, not she. She won't drive the truck for some reason. I, okay. I, I offered, but she doesn't want to. Uh, so they're in the back. This is the three stages of riding with a fifteen-year-old that you'll probably find out. Great. Well, it's probably even super excited. Twelve through fifteen, probably. So they get in. It's all giggles and just talk. Da, 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 and usually ripping on people they go to school with. That's oh, what great. They yeah. That's the first section. Then after that is dead silence. All three of them go onto their phones and they just sit in the back. <laughs> 
<laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, so it gets dead silent. Okay. So then it's like, okay, this is awkward. <laughs> so and and then when you're getting close, about ten minutes out, then the the chatter starts back up about the what they're gonna that, do. Yeah, the yeah, stores yeah, and stuff. Wow. That's that. What takes you to Great Lakes Crossing specifically for Holly? Michelle had a Disney gift card. So did Holly. They got a Disney store there. They got a Croc store there. Who bought her a Disney gift card at this point, and where? You can get them at Kroger's. Can you? Yeah. Okay. Nice. They're meant to go to like the resorts and stuff. Yeah. Like, well, like, you can use them at the Disney store too. Yeah. Or, well, or but Disney, they're so few Disney. and far Disney. between anymore. You can't. Yeah, but the website's still up. Oh, okay. You can, you can get anything off the website and stuff like that. So, so there's a lot of stores they like there. I and I haven't been in a while, so I was like, oh, I'll go. How is Great Lakes Crossing the mall anymore? I know they got that huge Bass Pro Shop out there. They still got. That. I guarantee you didn't go in there with three teenage girls. Oh, they, well, this is the move. So we you got we park where that arcade is. And once you get out the arcade, the three girls go their way. Me and Michelle go our way. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, you know, we don't want we don't want to be the boat anchors. So you're not hanging out. No, with them. no. no. Oh, okay. So we just hit me up when they want to meet up. Yeah, yeah. Thing. And you figure around two o'clock, meet up back at the arcade, and okay. we'll go from there. So they take off. They're gone. So um, you don't hang out with them at all until you met up with the arcade at yeah, the end. Yeah. Oh, they wow. don't. They eat lunch without us too. Like. Oh, okay. They, they ate super fat. We ate about noon. They ate like 11. They were like, I need some Taco Bell. <laughs> they were, they were oh, eating. wow. And okay. her friend Fatima has such small feet that she goes to the kid's foot locker to get shoes. Oh, wow. So I thought that She's was like funny. Heather that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She could actually buy kids' foot locker shoes. But so that, and then on the way home, the stages are the same. There's gibberish, dead silence. But the third stage is a little different. All three of them start dozing off like Furbies with low batteries. Really? The team was in a corner like this. Holly's in the middle of their eyes closed. And then Bree was leaning against the window. With How are they that exhausted? <laughs> <laughs> Teenagers like about this much energy. <laughs> wow. The short burst. Yeah, like now, funny. I was talking to Scott about that. He said, yeah, the same thing. If they had a long road trip, the wrestlers, guys are the same way. The teenage kids. They're talking a shitload, and then they, they get real quiet on their phones, and then they all doze off on the bus on the wow, way back. Wow, that's so, so weird. Yeah, so apparently teenagers got like, wow. so much energy. But then they wake up when they get home, and they're up till 2, 3 in the yeah, morning. Yeah, wow. That's what, it's just, her timeline's crazy. Yeah, so that, that's a road trip of 50. You're going to get to experience this coming up. Yeah. Because you know, you, you, wow. you're ripping on me on those texts. I'm like, yeah, you Yeah, wait. when you text me, it sounds awful. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, go, go, yeah. And it's like, oh, all right. And so... While we were there, though, at that arcade for 12 What bucks, do you and Michelle putz around to? Hold on. You, well, she you wants to go to the Disney store. So um, do you guys, like, run into Holly and her friends at the Disney store? No, or? no. They go. They went. They you guys went, act like she's the cool kid? Like, uh, well, you uh, wave to her from a yeah, distance? Yeah, don't, I don't know her. I don't know her. Uh, they were leaving the Disney store, but we got in there. Because Michelle, of course, she's like a water balloon. So every 45 minutes, she got to pee. Yeah. So I had to wait for her to pee. Okay. So by the time we got to the Disney store, they were already they shopped kind of fast. That's one difference between Michelle and Holly. Holly, Holly kind of knows what she wants, goes for it. Sometimes it she gets in, get it, yeah. sometimes she gets indecisive, but most of the time it's she's in pretty. And out. Like I want X, Y, and Z. And they're on their way. There's a Nike store there too. Okay. So, and you know, my daughter's still huge on Nike. So Nike, Crocs, and Disney. You know, yeah, she yeah, yeah, those are the she, Holly approved brands. Yeah, so she loves yeah. that mall. So we go there, and then there's a Is little. It, are there, but I, 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 and I'm, I'm obsessing on Great Lakes Crossing just because I don't go that often. It's a bit of a trek, and that's what you're saying. It's this about whole, an hour. Yeah, yeah. It takes a while. You, you got to roll seventy five. Yeah, it's right past the palace. Are there a lot of people still in that mall? That was the one thing. It wasn't very busy. Yeah, uh, but the, the, there's other times when we went. We went in August. Pre holiday or something. We went pre uh, back to school oh, okay. and it was it was fucking nuts. Oh, it was, okay. It was time, but so it's very situational. This is there. January. It's a couple weeks after the holiday, mm-hmm. so it was kind of slow. But so yeah. what do you guys putz into? What do you and Michelle? So we go to the Disney store first. I don't buy anything. There's a little cheesy toy store next door to it. That's where I found Lauren is uh, slime and clear. It's oh, like get that. Your, your niece like slime. Yeah. Get some <laughs> slime. And then Michelle bought. They're kind of funny. They're a little. Uh, Little figures, but you don't know which one you're getting. They're hidden packs. Oh, Jesus. Of old ad things. Like, one's Mr. Kool-Aid. Mm, one's okay. Frankenberry. Yeah, one's okay. Gre- like Jolly Green Giant. Yeah. She got Mr. Kool-Aid. I just hate blind buys. Yeah, man. Blind she got buys. Mr. Kool-Aid and another And I've one. got six Mr. Kool-Aids. Like, it's so annoying. I think she got the owl from the Tootsie Pops. That's so, not bad. It's yeah. kind of cool. It's a cool collection, yeah. but it's annoying that you can't. <laughs> yeah, I can't just go, I'm missing uh, the owl. Yeah, I need like, the she owl. wanted the Twinkie Man. Couldn't get the yeah, Twinkie. Twinkie, yeah. Yeah, Twinkie so, the Kid, dude. Yeah, so we go there, and then... There's a FYE, FOAE is kind of like a yeah. media play was yeah, back, in the, back day. in the day. But if I remember that FYE that's in that one's full of like a bunch of tchotchkes. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's got all... a ton of stuff in there, yeah. yeah. But it's all overpriced, ridiculously overpriced. I didn't buy it. They had some Japanese food, uh, oh, okay. but nothing I saw that we haven't really tried or anything. Yeah, we can I, do a point where I was looking. Got... I was like, what do we got? Yeah. Uh, we always uh, need snacks on the podcast. 
I really don't go to that much stuff. I just kind of tag along with Michelle. It's more them than us. I mean, we'd stop. I stopped at the Nike store. And Michelle's like, what are you doing in there? I go, I don't know. Maybe some Nike stuff I like. It yeah, doesn't fit you. None though. of them fit. The problem, there's yeah. an Under Armour store looking there. It doesn't fit. Yeah. Uh, there's a Lego. Their biggest, like, their biggest size, like 2X or something like yeah. that. Yeah. The Can't one I like, the tall. store I like, but I never buy anything in it, is the Lego store. Yeah, you go in there and admire it, and then you go, yeah. God damn, this shit's expensive. They had uh, collector's edition Star Destroyer. It was almost as long as this couch. It's crazy. It was $800. Yeah, <laughs> I, was like, Jesus. I had a hard sticker shock. In fact, today we took Lorna. She's doing the Harry Potter Legos because Heather annoyingly got Lorna into Harry Potter. <laughs> and... The the prices on those Harry Potter Legos, man, are out of control, dude. They're like a hundred bucks a piece, well, and Legos they're not even general. like a bigger set. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just like, dude, Legos are crazy. And don't let them retire them because then you can oh. only find them on eBay for four hundred dollars. Yeah, there's no way. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Uh, yeah, they had a lot of Legos. That, they do have. The, them Lego's also notorious for that you can buy the minifigs and those are in blind bags too. Yeah, and they came out with DC Comics one. All I want is Superman. Yeah, but I'll buy ten of them. Get that one Joker and Harley yeah, Quinn. Yeah. Yeah. I won't get one Superman. Yeah, I'm like, go on to eBay and see if someone's kicking a I Superman. Got five around. Robins. Nobody wants yeah. a Robin. <laughs> so the, the, the Lego I like stores. calling him Master Dick. Just so you know. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Got to keep it right. I like the Lego store, and of course, I always go to Lids because I'm like a hat guy that don't wear hats as much as I should. If you but... talk about an overpriced place, Lids yeah. is another perfect example of overpriced. When I was looking for my Texas A&M hat, I kept bumping into Lids, and I'm like, it was like thirty dollars. And also, yeah. I'm a white guy. I like to bend the bills on my hats, yeah, and so a lot well. of the, the you like fitted hats more than I do. I'm oh, more I of a snapback hats, or like a um, like a flex fit hat. Mm-hmm. I don't. And uh, Lids is annoying. Yeah, the the cool thing about Lids is when you go to another state because you get different yeah, because then it's the home team. Even here, it was it was Lions, yeah. Michigan. Yep. It yep. was like, uh, and I go to the GameStop, even though I never buy anything yeah. GameStop either. And then Michelle goes to, like the sketch. GameStop's store. got an identity crisis, dude. It yeah, doesn't know what to do. Struggling, yeah. yeah. And, and Torrid, Michelle's a big fan of Torrid. Uh, she goes in there. And that's about, there might be some other minor ones here and there. But I did go to the food court, and I got, they have Charlie's Philly cheesesteaks. Okay. Those are better than the ones in Philly, man. Yeah. It was a, it was about a foot long. It had the, the steak, onions, mushrooms, green peppers, and then uh, some provolone cheese on there. Yeah. And you could get whatever topping you want. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> that was the highlight of my trip was the steak. So, the, so we get done. We meet up with the girls at 10 o'clock at the, or 2 o'clock at the arcade. And then we rent for one hour for 12 bucks ping pong. They okay. had ping pong tables. bad, yeah. So the five of us got to play ping pong. Yeah. Out of all of us, who do you think the best was? Uh, Fatima. Michelle smoked uh, all of us. Well, she played tennis, so. I could get to the ball. I have fast enough reaction. Could not keep it in bounds. Yeah. I mean, you you got boom, Yeah. Boom, son of a, once I get that down, I'll smoke her. But I could not. She beat everybody. I, we play a lot of, ironically enough, we had, we had a big corporate client at the hotel so we had a foosball table and a ping pong table in house that we had. Mm. I got pretty good at ping pong. Oh, really? Because we played a ton. Like you, you just keep it in bounds. Yeah, we played. What's a the, ton trick? Of, it, the trick? The trick is hit it down, down, and spike it into the like because the only bounces over the up at you. So I have a habit of hitting it like this over the top of the ball and hit it down. Hit it down. Time, okay, man. I gotta, I gotta practice yeah. that. I'll probably never play again. But <laughs> yeah, and that's and it's been so long since we. But like I said, when we had that corporate club, because we had these big groups that would come in and we set up almost like a game room form, like a lounge all the time. Mm-hmm. So we just had like a. a I, that's why I have a foosball table in my living. We were playing so much foosball at work; <laughs> it was unbelievable. So every time we went to set those up, we would play for hours. So foosball was better than ping pong for you. I my favorite's rod hockey. I love rod hockey or yeah. bubble boy. That's the one thing they didn't play. have at this. Arcade. I love super checks rod hockey. I love it. I can't get enough of it. They had four different air hockey tables. The air hockey's fun, but I was hurt my shoulder because I tried too hard. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's the funny that the championship game. Holly was actually pretty. She had this fast serve. Mm-hmm. She got it down where she could hit and just smoked me. She beat me like we we only played eleven because we didn't know it was supposed to be yeah. twenty one. So I lost like eleven to five, and she was smoking me on that. And then she played Michelle. Michelle beat her 11 to 9. No. And Holly was just pissed. Holly hates losing to her mom. Well, first, Holly's very competitive. Okay. And on top of it, losing to mom. Oh, would not play again. Yeah, She's like, wow. Michelle's like, let's play one Threw more. Threw the paddle down. I'm out. Yeah, oh. she was like, yeah, she got so Ear, pissed. AirPods went in. Jeez, like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she, would, she would not. Yeah. She would be on Michelle's team. Like, we play doubles. I, but she hates losing to her mom. Yeah. 
We I kind of, that one do you person. guys hate though, like sore losing sometimes? Because like, especially having a daughter, like, yeah, I, it's like it's okay to lose, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, but that comes with age. When yeah, you're at, when you're 15, you're not losing. Not, yeah, you know. it's just a, it's like, dude, take it easy. Like, you, certain... you, so when you say Michelle's good at, you know why she played tennis all those times. Yeah, time. and yeah. in ping pong, you don't have to run. So. Yeah, so in real tennis, tennis where she... you stay put. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you can see why she might be pretty good at. <laughs> yeah, it. she was good. She yeah. was the best one, and it's okay, you know, but like. Like said, she's all, taking it all personal. In all honesty, I was probably the worst one. <laughs> I was like, oh. And I here just, you are. You play a ton of racquetball. Yeah. It's like it doesn't translate. But in racquetball, you don't have to keep it in bounds. You yeah. can just rack it. You know? Yeah, it's true. Well, in tennis, I'm pretty good. I can beat Holly, and I, I'm pretty sure I can beat Michelle right now. But I... I have it down in tennis. I know now. You shrink that. It board. took a year. Yeah. It took two years of racquetball a year of playing tennis to get that down. Yeah. Just one shot at ping pong. I was screwed. It's fun. But it, it was fun. Ping pong's one of those things that you, if you don't play for a long time, you go. It's a good time. You know what I mean. And the same thing can be said about like pool and stuff like that. Yeah. If you can go and find a good group of people to just goof around and play, it's fun. You well, know the what girls mean? do want to play pool. They've never. They always play it on go their up to iPhones. Up to the end that, the that's probably the next thing we're gonna do. Just puts up right there. I have them. I'm gonna take them all. And have There's them no one pool. in it. You because they always. Play on their iPhones. They got a pool game they can play. Yeah. So I was like, "Oh, we're gonna play the real thing and see yeah, what happens." It's fun. I'm terrible at pool too, so I, <laughs> I I I hate when I play a game of pool and they don't let you call, just do slop. Yeah, They're like, people you? get technical. Like, shut on up, there. dude. Are we serious right Michelle's now? Michelle was getting a little technical on the ping pong because I only kind of glanced at the rules on a, on a, my phone, you know. Yeah, and I guess. We were just playing each person serve. So you serve, I serve, you serve. Just rotate it back and forth. You go until you lose serve. Yeah, and you only you, score points on yeah, serve. I didn't know that. Well, yeah, but like, we all suck. So it's like if one person served, you'd as win. As long as you, we're all on the same page with yeah, the rules, yeah. that's all that matters. So she, she popped us a little bit on that. But it, it was ignorance. We just didn't I mean, know. heck, you can get a ping pong table dirt cheap. I mean, I don't know. What the heck? <laughs> it's like a piece of we wood just, on some wheels. You just have nowhere to put it. Um, yeah, that's true. But her friend Bree was like, oh, I kind of like this. And yeah. She was terrible like me. So yeah. I was like. Well, you could get some practice. Yeah, it's you know. fun. So the, the girls got to play ping pong, and that was my big trip for the weekend. Now, next weekend, I text you about it. Holly, well, Holly doesn't want to go, but Michelle and I are going to try a Korean barbecue. Right? Yeah. Did I've, you find the name of that place I texted you about? I didn't find that one. I, but I, I said three people have I, I, my job. I had a real hard on for going to Korean barbecue because I saw it on a random show. And you know how yeah, I get. it's usually at cooking shows where I see yeah. Guy Fieri's been on a couple of them. Yeah. So in, in there was a, there's a place that just passed. It's it's off kind of by that, that old Toys R Us on Telegraph right over there. Mm-hmm. It's down over in that area that three people told me that's the place to go. So Well, I've heard that one, and then we found one in Troy, and then we found one in Canton. So there's three to okay. pick from. Yeah. The Troy one might win just because I can go to Micro Center so I'm out there. <laughs> I love let me see you my love it. My socks. <laughs> you you get a deal always love going on out a new there. bracket. You never yeah, know. Yeah, you yeah great. You get a new bracket. Like I, the the one hard drive place case. that I was super impressed with was Fry's when we were out there with BV. Yeah, that, that place had is cool. Those. That yeah, place yeah, is really well, cool. Yeah, I don't but think... you do love some Micro Center. Yeah. So there we go. A little look at all that stuff. And uh, now we're going to go into, we're going to talk about some protein. Right? Yeah, it's New Year's Day or whatever. New Year's Day with protein. People yeah, are on so their diet kicks. It was funny that, I, like I said, I read the show notes, and you picked up these, these Quest Protein cookies, and I happened to pick up these le- sweet lemon ollie protein, but these were plant-based, and I know that Ooh, we were talking about. Plant-based. I'm not sure. Yours has milk chocolate in it, I'm sure. So that's kind of what has it. But this is, um, I was kind of peeping it. It's got the pea protein. So that's how it's doing. Pea protein. That's how a lot of those. Um, what is that, banana flavored? This is sweet lemon. I've got a big oh. hard on for lemon lately and anymore oh, as I get older. Just break off a chunk of, well, just I guess. Take one I'll just do it. It's smaller than I thought it was going to be. But Ollie is a really big company at like Target Gluten and stuff free. like that. So yeah. And where did you find these at Target? Uh, these were at Kroger, actually. Oh. They look like an iced oatmeal cookie, though. The funny part is Charles and I don't really talk to each other about the t- taste test all the time. We just end up with So we randomly ends. end up with the same kind of thing. It is dry as shit, though. I like the icing on it. I don't like the cookie part of it. Yeah. It reminds me, remember when I was on that powder diet and they gave me those protein cookies? Oh, okay. So what kind of in the same vein. But our, ours are straight oatmeal, though. They were oatmeal cookies. Um, it's crazy how much protein's in these things. Yours has 16. This guy's got 12. It's 180 calories. What is yours clocking in at calorie 220. 220. So they're a little beefier on there. Yeah. But you got more protein kicking out of that Quest one. These look like a little bigger, too. They look way bigger. 
monster here. You can try one of these. One of the things I eat, one part of my morning, so I I drink it on the way to the gym when I do go to the gym and stuff like that. I drink that Orgain protein shake. That's that vegan protein shake. I drink that every morning. Orgain. I never heard of it. Yeah, it's completely plant based. And then um, I also get, I like Cliff Bars. Do you ever eat Cliff Bars at all? Uh, yes. Cliff occasion. bars are really good. They're kind of expensive sometimes. Kroger's the key on, or, or Target rather is the key on that one. Target's always cheaper on those. It looks like a legit cookie, though. I'll tell you this much. So this now, is this the Quest these, peanut butter chocolate I've chip. I've seen these at 7-Eleven. I've seen these this at other places. This looks goddamn delicious. It, it looks, looks like a real cookie. Oh, my God. I was walking past Mrs. Fields. Well, that's a delicious-looking cookie. Yeah, it's a little cold. It's been in my truck. I got to tell you, that's awesome. That's the best thing we've ever, you know what I mean? Like, that is an awesome cookie. For something that's kind of healthy for you. I don't know how healthy because it's 220 calories, but. That's awesome. 11 grams of fiber, so we're all going to poop. i tell you what, man. That is delicious. They had chocolate chip. They had sugar the cookie. I don't know how. Oh, you, my God. They had peanut, regular peanut butter, peanut butter, chocolate chip. That is, I'm eating this whole thing. This is delicious. There's a big stand of them at the tar- Target. How much was this? It was four. So you have four cookies. $7.50. Oh, man. Two bucks a cookie. Yeah. But you yeah. see these at checkouts a lot. And I've always seen them, but I was always curious. I'm like, oh, this kind of tastes like sawdust. This is goddamn them. good, dude. And if you're diabetic, it's only one gram of sugar, so that's not bad. Oh, is that, is that the other thing, too? Mm-hmm. That's why I picked them up. Wow. I mean, it's got fiber in it. I don't know why we're doing that. We don't need fiber anymore. <laughs> I was told. I, I got to tell you, see, this is a huge thumbs up for me. I would eat this just as a treat. And they always tell you uh, when total sugar is one gram. <clears throat> and you got to look for that includes added sugars. It says zero. Like a lot of companies will hide the added. This sugars. might be the best guy. I like this is the best protein anything I think I've ever eaten. It's probably why it's seven fifty a box. Holy shit, is this good? Well, you cannot feel guilty eating this, right? I I don't know, but man, alive, Steve. Like the other thing we ate, I'm gonna have to get the, these, put them in my lunch. Yeah, right? holy shit. The Ollie thing tastes like a protein bar. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like it's grainy, it's, yeah, it's grainy kinda, sawdust. Yeah. Taste. This tastes like a goddamn cookie someone made, like I said, Mrs. Fields or something. I'd like to put this in like in a microwave for 20 seconds or this something. This is amazing. Make it nice and warm. Okay, so I got to tell you, huge thumbs up for the Quest cookie. So the Quest beats the Ollie's. The Quest beats any protein I've ever had. I don't know how they do it. I don't know what chemicals are in this, but magic is in this thing. I might... Affect our penis or something. <laughs> you know, I don't be, know. Man. There'd be some side effect somewhere, but that is worth every bit of seven fifty. I gotta remember that Quest cookies, man. I've never seen. I see them at the counters individually packed, but I've never seen like a four pack. And Target just happened to have them sitting there, so I was like, let me try. Yeah, and of course, that's... they didn't have the cinnamon coke. That doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta tell you, it might be one of the best things we had on the taste test and everything. I mean, that's a protein cookie, but and it's even more than the Ali thing. That's awesome. And they're bigger than the Ali ones. Mm-hmm. Now, how much did a box of Ali ones cost? That was only four fifty. Mm. But to the point, if you give me that, I'm eating a protein bar. I eat this, I'm eating like a cookie. You know what I mean? I have to give one to Heather and let her try it. Oh, my God. Things. Yes, please. So, big thumbs up, Quest Cookie. Ali one's not bad, but it's protein. You, you, know, you can tell yeah. you're eating a... Chewy protein bar. Yeah. Man. Steve. Kudos. <laughs> that, is, <laughs> that is delicious. So out of our head-to-head protein roundup, Quest wins. Oh, my God. Quest wins by a mile. Quest wins over, like, all the Kit Kats. At your local wave. Target, seven fifty four four-pack. Give it a try. Wow. <laughs> we got to go on with the podcast. We got mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. Did you finish off the peach Coke? Yeah, I did. I and Heather liked it too. It was, I think that was good stuff too. But I gotta tell you, <laughs> <laughs> wow! Did we start something bad? No, I'm just telling you, man. I'm gonna pick up some Quest cookies. I'd never. Yeah, that's like a good said, one. If like randomly throughout your day, if you because I tend to get ravenously hungry after lunch and before my dinner. Mm. So that might be a good little like you know, keep knock you the, the edge off. Keep yeah. you out of the drive-through. Yeah, get a box of these. Yeah, yeah. that's good. 
That was, man. I'm going to have to go to Target and give me another box. And then, like I said, they had peanut butter, peanut butter chocolate chip. I would have no idea that that had the healthiness built into it with the high protein, high fiber, low and sugar. Sugar, low sugar, yeah. Yeah, that's, it's crazy. For diabetics, this is, uh, this is a good one. Yeah, I've had low sugar diabetic. I, Michelle bought me by Userna. They're like little bitty. It's like, a, it's like that big. Like a fun size Snickers, mm-hmm. and they're 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 diabetic uh, candy bars and stuff, and they're not oh. as good as this. Yeah, <laughs> this is hands down better. People, and you're you're saying you can buy them single packs too? Yeah, I've seen them. Try them as a single stuff. pack if you're questioning it, but I would say kick on the whole box, man. Yeah, they had, and they had a variety at at your local Target, uh, and we're not sponsored by Quest, but if you want to sponsor, us. yeah, I mean, dude, I'm listening because <laughs> I am down with your products. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's a good protein snack. Mm. And I'm a big, uh, out of all the cookies, peanut butter cookies are always on the top of my list. I love I, peanut butter cookies. I think that's a good cookie regardless of the protein and stuff like that. It's a yeah. good cookie. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Wow. So there we go. So Dude, protein of the year quest. Yeah, that's magical, people. Now, this part we usually talk about a lot of shows and games or shows and games and movies we watch. But this week, I'll be honest, Charles, too, we've watched a lot of bowl games. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't get to a ton of movies this week. And plus... Not a lot of new stuff came out really this week. Uh, it's a low period, you yeah. know. Now, nineteen seventeen is supposed to come out next weekend, which we'll I, have a review of that. I'm gonna check that out. Somehow sure. it's in the Academy Awards, but now being really, I, I don't know what they did with the release. They told you they limited thing. they limited release it to to hit that that year for the Academy Awards. They do that, and so its release date is about December of twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen rather, and then it'll get its wide release. On the 10th of January. So next weekend is going to be its wide release. Yeah. So the, the one I did <laughs> check out, and this is with Jennifer Lopez. My wife forced me to watch the movies with her. We watched two movies back to back. The first one being The Marriage Story, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And the second one being Hustlers with with Jennifer Lopez. You're having, having a stroke over there? Steve's. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so Jennifer Lopez is in this. Cardi B is in this. Lizzo is in this. Uh, does does Jennifer Lopez show anything other than just provocative skin? No, no. So, and uh, the mom from Fresh Off the Boat, which I think is a little bit of a miscast, but she's supposed to be the hot young Asian girl in it. Mm. But mm, feels a little odd. Maybe yeah. because you know she's the mom off Fresh Off the Boat. You're yeah, like, it's weird for me trying to think of her as a twenty something year old. Yeah, stripper. but she also seems to be like the it Asian American yeah, actress yeah. right now. Yeah. So. It, it's a story of yeah, I don't know if you've heard the, the story, but it ta- the real life. It did happen in real life. It happened in scores in New York. So a group of strippers, right after recession in two thousand eight, weren't making a lot of money because no one was going to the strip clubs. What they would do, there was four of them. They would go to local bars, find a high end Wall Street guy wearing the big watch, and make, you know they would scope him out, hit on him, sit there, and then her, our three other friends would come over. So it'd be four hot girls, this one Wall Street guy. They would drug him. Just enough where it wouldn't knock him out, but he'd be loopy. Take him back to the strip club. They weren't working at the strip club at this time. <clears throat> Go to like the VIP room. They were in the strip club was in on it with him. They'd con him and get him whatever black card he has, charge twenty, fifteen thousand hmm. dollars. And that then, seems like an elaborate plan, though. And it's all I looked it How up. How often could that happen, though? I, I mean, did it a lot. Really? Yeah. And I looked it up online, thinking it's all bullshit. It's a true story. Yeah. It's all. Tr- well, I mean, probably some of it's, you know, fudge. Do you for the see movie. any nudity in this movie? No, I, there's <laughs> yeah, ba- there's like a background titty here or there uh, okay. from some you know whatever random, random. yeah. But as far as like you don't see Cardi B, That's Lizzo, okay. you actually see everything. But she's got black tape over her nipples. Uh, the one you really don't want to see oh, everything. Great. Which this is supposed to. Be, they don't ever say it scores, but we know it scores Damn. in real life. So I don't. No offense to Lizzo, I like big girls. As you much don't as know I, she's working at Scores in New York. She's Manhattan not getting now. a job at Scores yeah. in New York, right? Uh, so it's so basically that's it. It's it. And it's just like every other typical scam movie, oh, Wolf of Wall Street or any other ones. They do it so long, and then they start screwing up, and they get busted. They get comfortable. And yeah. The one thing of them like, has cracks and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and they, hire, they, they bring in another girl who's a drug addict, and that kind of leads to problems, and you can figure it out. What so story-wise, you kinda, it's all by the numbers, and you've seen it a million times. But 
I mean, it's it, it's it's okay. The music's really good, actually. Ironically, mm-hmm. you'll like to. Usher shows up for a scene. He playing himself, and I'm like, "Who's getting herpes?" No, that's, uh, that's, all, that's all me and Shell kept thinking of. It's supposed to take place in 2007 at that point, but so it, it spans from 2007 to 2018 is what it does. I guess they recently got busted, so mm-hmm. and of course they changed some of the names. But I will watching the movie. I have to give credit to Demi Moore. Okay. Demi Moore was in the movie Striptease. She's the only real actress that was in a strip movie that actually stripped. Uh. Even Channon Tatum never showed dog. Yeah. Even Matthew McConaughey never did it. J Lo and now the mom friend. None of them they're all in these stripper movies. Nobody strips. At least Demi Moore did it. <laughs> I don't know if you ever saw that movie, but it was terrible. But was, so I, as a stripper movie, and it's a by a numbers movie, I yeah. A five. <laughs> I mean, yeah. if you think you're going in to see a lot, I mean, Jennifer Lopez loses, wears some really skimpy stuff. She does in real life. I mean, yeah. what are we doing? I it, don't need it, to pay her $7. Yeah, it's not anything you wouldn't see her on, probably wear at a Grammys award or anything. Great. I paid 7 bucks for side boob. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, like, so you don't ever see her naked. No. Uh, okay. So... Five out of ten for me. I just, eh, whatever. And like, I'm not a big perv or whatever. I sound like it, obviously, during this review. But I'm saying, like, if you're gonna go to a stripper movie or like, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, might as well do it. <laughs> Steve's got snacks now. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Like, to me, like, like what you're implying with the Demi Moore stuff and all that. If you're gonna do it, just go whole hog and just, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like at some point, but. Even like Magic, and I'm not trying to sound sexist, because I like, when I watch Magic Mike with my wife... Show your penis. Hey, Mark Wahlberg did it in Boogie Nights, dude. a fake penis. Though. But I'm just saying, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? No I mean, one said you got to show real titty, I guess. At least show a tit, though. I mean, for men and women. I mean, if you're going to do a strip movie, hey, let's strip. I mean, yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, well, or don't do the movie. Yeah, you know? listen, if you're going to act, do it. You know? I don't know. So Now... There was two Netflix things that you watched and you gave. Your I've already seen. On. I've already talked about. I can definitely contribute to the conversation. Yeah, yeah. and I, I wanted to just give my thoughts because you've said it on the podcast before. Uh, the one I really agree with you on is Game Changers. The Game Changers document. It's going to show up in my in the top ten list of streaming movies and TV shows from Netflix yeah. and stuff later. I really liked it. I did enjoy it, and they they showed a lot of stuff. Eye opening. It really for, is. For what anyone doesn't know, it, it's a documentary about switching from a meat based diet and a plant animal product diet to more of a vegan slash vegetarian diet. Yeah. And they had it backed with science. It wasn't just... Now, there was some in there where they're interviewing the athletes. I don't know. I switched to vegetarian now. Yeah. So, it's so much... In- okay, I don't want to hear that bullshit. Yeah. But then they did have the scientists with the blood that you said. The blood thing is still one of the most startling things for me. Well, the one that startled me was the uh, firefighters. Okay. They did it for a week, and they, all their cholesterol went down yeah, 100 to 200 they, for they, one week. Yeah. I was like, wow, that's pretty Well, but good. I mean, think about what a fire... So if if you work in a firehouse and you're cooking meals with a bunch of eight other dudes, you know what I mean? Like what yeah, a do lot you of cook? burgers and steaks. Yeah, what are you cooking? cooking? You know yeah. what I mean? Like so you could see that that would take a big, you know. And even your hero showed up in that Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah. and even he said his cholesterol has gone down two, three hundred points because he switched yeah, his diet. Just fat in the blood, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, I, I can never go full plant based. I just can't do it. Yeah, but it's, like it's all I'm saying is. I, you you know, try for it, a week it puts in mm-hmm. my mind of like I said, I make different choices. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's all I, I that's how I kind of took away from the documentary. Look, if it changes your lifestyle, it, it's a hard lifestyle to do. And if you can do it, more power to you. I can't do it. But all I'm saying is there's certain things in that documentary that will blow your mind. And yeah. it's just like I, I thought that the penis testing, the erections while you sleep thing's a little weird. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But like I said, like the feeding you something and checking your blood and separating your blood and one is cloudy as all hell, one is clean as a whistle. If that doesn't make you go, God damn, I don't know, yeah, I don't yeah. know what does. So. And like I said, the firefighters, their physical cholesterol reports went down 100 points. Yeah. When you have a report, it tells you the, it went a down. A lab did the work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, not, like, it's, not, just, not, it's not someone's thought. And like yeah. I felt like I could just run a mile. Yeah, like a lot of those Olympians in there, oh, I'm doing better at 35. The okay, one nice thing down. I will tell you with the diet, it had good production value. Yeah, we often yeah. talk about that, too, with like um, a handful of TV shows that we watch. It, great production value. I think the dude James Wilkes, the guy that did from the MMA, the UFC stuff, is pretty knowledgeable and stuff. I, I, I think that if you own Netflix or re- you know have a membership to Netflix, you have to watch it. Yeah, it was good. And 
I don't, did you recognize the UFC guy that hosted it? I don't know. Yes, who that guy yeah, was. I know him oh. from the Ultimate Fighter and stuff like I that. I mean, I knew because of the show they explained it, but no, I didn't. No, I, no, I, yeah. I didn't recognize no. him. But it was good. It was very eye opening. Now, will I switch if we can? Probably not. But I, I tell you this week, we plan out five meals a week. Mm-hmm. Uh, one day I'm playing racquetball, and one day we use to eat out. Yep, Korean barbecue. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, we are having one day with no meat. See? It's quesadillas and salads. Is there what we're go. eating. Okay. I know. What are you using for the protein in it? What do you mean? No, cheese. You, just cheese, huh? Yeah, okay. Cheese and maybe a little onion. And, okay. And then we're having salads, and you know that's it. And okay. So, then we'll, so we you're going to veggie pack them, is what you're saying? Yeah, one one day a week we'll uh, cut the meat. Cut the meat. Now, that's that's my that's my compromise. But I don't know if I could ever do five days. Now let's go to the other thing. Now you, you've stated on this podcast before, and you've expressed it. You love weird marital awkward issues. <laughs> I do. I really do. <laughs> I love them. And so I think that, your... that blackish plot line that you're referring to uh, is some of the most compelling TV you watch. And then this movie that you're about to talk about was uh, just as compelling. For uh, <laughs> I don't get you sometimes. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, you are my brother, but at the same time, <laughs> I'm like, really? Me and Michelle watched, uh, on your recommendation, The Marriage Story, yes. Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson. Not just my recommendation. Critics yeah, love that, it. I, it's I, going I to see a lot of award buzz. And both of us were looking at each other like, really? <laughs> 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 I, there's two scenes in it I really enjoyed. I love the scene, and I think I told you on text, I love the scene when they're arguing in his apartment, and, and it felt very emotional. Yeah, it's so real. So like, you're just watching it going, whoa. I like that scene a lot. It's one of the better scenes in the movie. And then, uh, God damn, I can't even remember the other scene. It was so uh. good. Oh, the part where he has the, the lady come watch him and his son. Yeah, and he's just awkward. He can't do nothing and right. And he cuts his yeah. arm and blood's going like, everywhere. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. I like those two scenes. But for the most part, it was just... It was like Andy Kaufman humor, just but it's not meant to be humor. It's meant to be drama. Just this awkward situation. Yeah. And the one thing it, it always amazes me, and it must happen in real life a lot, is when men are... I, maybe me and you are just jaded people that have been around a long time. <laughs> I know if I get a divorce, it's, it's a tooth and nail fight and don't trust From any, jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So many guys... Got these blinders on. Yeah. She won't do that to me. And in I, this movie... Listen to what I, I hit you up on text... You have a very good friend of you that said those very words. Yes, yes. So you're sitting here going, apparently this happened. When you know first goddamn hand. Yeah, I know. I know. And it's just so amazing. It's like they should hand a booklet out to every man. Listen, you may get divorced in your life. <laughs> it's going to get take real. take her word for anything. <laughs> Write shit down. You know, so right. what we're referencing in the movie, Adam Driver thinks this divorce is going to go smooth. Everyone's yep. going to be happy. Yeah. She's just going to go back to California, but they're coming back to New York. Yeah, they're, they're coming fine. back to you. Well, guess she what? She knows this is where my career is, is here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she lawyers up and drags him to the coast <laughs> yeah, and makes him go lawyer, broke. And that lawyer is the Laura Dern character. Yeah, so Yeah, the brutal. same lady that figured out how to hyper jump into those. <laughs> yeah. Face. Dude, she brutal. just destroys him. Uh, yeah, and then Ray Liotta comes in. Oh, he ends up yeah. writing that check to Ray Liotta. 25 like, grand. Yeah, dude, it's crazy. Whew. But, uh, so I mean, there's moments in it. But as a whole, unless you like awkward marital <laughs> situations. Just me, big time, yeah. I think there's little to no action. It just it, It's good acting. Adam. Now, like me and Michelle are debating about this. Now, she's a female, so she, her oh. opinion counts. But is Adam Trigger good looking or not? What What is the thing on that? I don't think he is. So the last. I think that he, Pete Chicks like him because he he's a great actor, I think, is what it comes down to. And mm-hmm. I think that anytime you're. You know, really good, at, especially at acting, and chicks can watch you in a movie and stuff like yeah. that, that that can be attractive. But, like, if you're walking down the street and it's Adam Driver, the nobody, yeah, Adam there's Driver, no the carpenter, way. Yeah, no there's cares. no way. Uh, now, chicks, they go crazy in Star Wars when they had that scene that last one, we had a shirt off. Yeah. They love that. Yeah. So, I don't I, know. I, I still think, I think they're reading... He's Kylo Ren. He's Ben. Or he's, he's an yeah. actor. He's got money. He's yeah. got this. So, the, so Adam Driver, the electrician, is not yeah, knocking it that's down. What I'm, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, okay, yeah. okay. I was just curious about that. So, Marriage Story, I'm not, you know, for me, it's like a four, but I know Charles likes it a lot. Oh, I love it, it. The critics love it. So, maybe, you're going to see a lot of it come award season. Tonight, uh, Golden Globes, it's already oh, is nomin- that tonight. Yeah, this is tonight, tonight with okay. Ricky Gervais. Uh, it's already is he allowed nominated. to host his transphobic tweets and all that kind of stuff? I, apparently, he's okay. allowed. To, he's going to be on there tonight. Uh, so they already love it. So I know I'm in the minority here, but I just <laughs> I'm not into oh, the awkward marriage so stuff. Good, uh, 
I just love to watch something that just seems so real. Yeah. And that's what leads me into the next conversation. Me and you talked about it last week. There's a Kevin Hart docuseries that just hit. It's called Kevin Hart, Don't Fuck This Up. And it's a five-part series on Netflix. Five parts? It's five parts. I thought it was one movie. No, no, it's not. I thought it was like kind of a stand-up mixed in with somebody. No, it's it literally is showing you his life. And it's his life through the Oscar drama from last year. It's his life through the cheating fiasco he had where he got caught cheating and his best friend sold him out. Or one of his, one of his paper cup boys, which is like his crew, uh, sold him out and actually set him up in why, this whole. Why did he do that? They explain in the documentary, like so, basically, like a periphery guy of his crew set him up to extort money out of him. It's wow. crazy, yeah. I gotta tell you, like, and again, this is on Netflix. Kevin Hart did an amazing thing because you know he had full creative control. He let all everything come out, all the warts and all. He showed you how he screwed up handling the Oscar thing. He showed uh, or he showed how he ended up fighting his one best friend trainer like on a on a private jet. He ends up like beefing with his one best friend and then they end up calling the cops on the plane lands and stuff. This was really riveting. Oh my god. Mm. You also see in you, this documentary, you hire a film crew to follow him around for. It's what it seems like. Yeah, yeah, mm. it's exactly what it seems like. Hmm. And then he just sold it off to Netflix, or either, or he made a deal with Netflix to show his life. Mm. It, it's just, and again, it's what makes to me marriage stories so real. Feel it's that, but it's re, you know what I mean. It actually is a docu series and stuff like that. It's this is cool, man. And so you all see, five what, episodes are up now. Yeah, and you also see Kevin Hart is one of those dudes that. Didn't kind of come from nothing. Philadelphia born, had a single mom. His brother got emancipated, but then he ends up helping his brother out later in life, gets him a barber shop. And he's a genuinely good dude, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. But you also see kind of how to explain it. Like if if you all of a sudden had ten million dollars and you were from the hoods of Philadelphia, like how people kind of come at him, like his dad, like is a real deadbeat kind of dude. But then his mm-hmm. dad comes to him for money, and he's like, "Look, dad, what do you need? What do you need? You know what I mean? Like, kind of tell me what you need, and you got it. It's fine. You know what I mean? Like, it this this is cool to watch, man. You also see this guy doesn't stop, man. He is just nonstop, twenty four hours a day, from one thing into this project, into that project, and just people are coming to him from all different angles. I, and then he's training, and he's do. It's just, it is. Cra- he made me tired just watching it. It was just crazy. <laughs> Very fantastic series. Would will easily make my list of top shows for twenty twenty. It was. If great. you're not a fan of Kevin Hart, do you think you'd enjoy it? I, 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 I don't know because I can't come to it from that lens. Mm. Like for me, I just I find Kevin Hart to be a hilarious guy, and then at the same time. I think that it's amazing because I would call Kevin Hart an A-tier celebrity at this point. He had a at chance point, to, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, th- I think that he's got up to that point. Mm-hmm. To see someone, and he's willing to put all this out there is what is so weird to see because you don't see a lot. You'll never see Tom Hanks tell you, oh, you know what I mean, like mm-hmm. have a film crew mm-hmm. follow you, you know, or follow Probably him. Probably pretty boring, though. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> yeah. but you wouldn't. You, Tom Hanks would nitpick everything. Like, oh, I ain't showing that. Or, yeah, yeah. And Kevin Hart just put it all out there and just was like, here's me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You want to see who I am. You want to see what it was like from my camp through this stuff. Here it is. And it was it was cool, man. It's just fascinating. I have to watch that. Yeah, I think it's good. I think you might get you you get sucked into it because it was one of those ones I, I was like four episodes in and didn't. Even really, I was just going episode to episode to episode. Mm-hmm. I'm like, dang. So fascinating show. It's called Kevin Hart. Don't fuck this up. Highly recommend that show. So like I said, this week we only have Hustlers, which was mediocre at best. Marriage Story, which we're kind of split on. Game Changers, we both agree on, is really good. And Kevin Hart, Don't Fuck This Up, which Charles highly recommends. I haven't watched yet, but I will get to that. Yeah, great. Especially with football winding down. So now let's go into what everyone's watching right now is football, right? Correct. Uh, Now, last night there was two big games. And uh, maybe the end of a dynasty. Who knows? I have to hear about that one more time. I'm going to barf. But let's go about the early game, though. I was hoping the Bills, the Rasputins of the NFL, could pull yeah. it out. Bills. It looked good, great. Up, Jumped up 16 nothing. Yeah, You know what I mean? Like, mm. came out and was like, whoa, this is in Houston, ladies and gentlemen. Like, yeah. just ran right in there in... They lost. Bills lose 19-22 to to the Texans in overtime. In, in overtime. Playoff game. Yeah. Uh, Josh Allen, the quarterback for the Bills... 
the last five minutes of the game went full retard. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know, know what, what he was doing. Did like, you see that lateral? I don't. Yeah, yeah. the last second you just throw. Whoa, whoa, dude! What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I never seen a guy just there. want to lose a game <laughs> yeah. or or think he was winning the game for him and just couldn't get it together. Yeah. I don't know what was. He going had a lot on. of pressure. I think just built up on him. And oh my god! He took two bad sacks. I'm like, how do you not throw those away? Oh man, I don't know. I thought it was over after those two bad sacks. Yeah. Somehow they got another shot at it. Uh, the Texans, I... you got to admit, though, is that J.J. Watt sack that weirdly like turned to the whole yeah, tide. Yeah, but then he, he cupped the quarterback's balls on that and blew in his ear. I hate that homo. Uh, <laughs> no, wow, okay. no, I just can't stand J.J. Watt. But, I mean, he's probably a nice person. He just, as soon as he makes a sack, oh, here's a picture of his brother. Here's a picture of his oh, family. Gee, the thing, you know? wow. Oh, my God, we got to have to have a five-minute segment on J.J. Watt now. Oh, he made a sack. Man. But that's all he had was the one sack. But anyways. Uh, but the Bills lose twenty two to nineteen. I am with you. I think I wanted Buffalo to win for sure. Oh, I, I picked Buffalo to win actually. Everybody wanted the Bills to win. The Bills Mafia. Uh but unfortunately it didn't happen. The Texans uh, Texans the reason why I don't like the Texans, I was thinking about this on the way over. You just don't know what you're getting with the Texans. But that's my same argument for the Tennessee Titans. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like I But did. you can argue that, but also with the Tennessee, you know they're gonna pound the rock. You at least know that. Yeah. They're gonna try to pound the rock and hope you don't stop it. Where the Texans will score 50 on you one week, and they only score like 13 the next yeah. week. I don't understand what the hell the Texans do. But So the Texans are headed to Kansas City. Uh, what are you like in that one if, if the Texans play Kansas City? I like Kansas City, Baltimore, yeah. for sure. I think for Kansas the- City 34-14 to 14 over the Texans, I think. I think that's going to be too much for them to handle, but uh, we'll see. So then the next night, or the same night, later in the night, uh, my style of football game came on. Grimy. I'm gonna in run the fog. It. I'm gonna yeah, it was... run it at you. Continue. He ran the ball thirty plus times for 182 yards. Derrick Henry from the Tennessee Titans. We're talking about the game is 14. Look to, good doing it too. 14 to 13 with a couple minutes left. Uh, then Brady gets the ball back with what was it? 25 seconds or yeah. something. It was pretty much over anyways. He had no timeouts and throws a pick six to end the game. Mm. 20 to 13, New England loses at home in the playoffs to, to Mike Vrabel. Yeah. To the, yeah, their former player, Mike Vrabel. Yeah. Uh, basically, Tennessee's whole game plan was we are going to run the ball continuously. Come at me. <laughs> yeah, I love that thing in the fourth quarter where they purposely took a delay of game to eat the clock more yeah. and then jumped off. That's something yeah, Belichick. That's a Belichick move. That's a Belichick yeah. move if I've ever seen yeah. one. And they ate like a minute off the clock. And me, yeah. me and both Scott were like, now, what happens if Tennessee needs that minute back? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Whoopsie. Like, uh, yeah, but it worked out for him. 20 to 13. Uh, grimy game all through the whole game. All you heard about is Tom Brady. Is he done? Is he yeah. going somewhere else? Hey, Joe Montana finished his career in the Chiefs, you know, so it happens. Do you he, think Brady's done or do you think Brady's going somewhere? What is your opinion? He, in an interview, said he's not ready to retire. So, so he's got to go somewhere? He, or you think he's coming back? I don't think the Patriots want him back. If they did, they would have probably resigned him during the season. That's the thing. Uh, Who you got? Well, Belichick thinks he's a mastermind, so he's going to get anybody he wants. <laughs> okay. Now, here is a crazy, crazy rumor I heard on the radio. What do you morning. got? Josh McDaniels is okay. going to interview for the head coaching job at Dallas. Dallas does not want to re-sign Dak Shepard. Or, or what's his name? You're telling me that they Brady want... and Daniels go to the Cowboys. Yes, that's Ooh. that was on this morning, wow. and they're going to ship the current quarter. But what is his name? Is it Dak Shepard? Dak Prescott. Prescott. What did I say? Shepard. I'm Dak thinking of Shepard. Actor. Yeah, the Dak Prescott is going to get shipped. The Colts want him. Okay, they're going to ship him there. And Brady and, and McDaniels are going to come there. Where's Mike McCarthy going to end up? That's the other thing I want to know. He's interviewed, he's interviewed for all these open positions. And nobody's like, offered him anything. Yeah, it seems yet. crazy, right? Yeah. Redskins locked up their co- coach Rivera pretty quick. Yeah. and Jack Del Rio. <laughs> yeah. So who knows? But unfortunately, until these, the Tom Brady does something or the Patriots do something. It's going to be Brady Watch. Oh, Brady Watch 2020 yeah. is going to be every week. It's going to be annoying. So now Tennessee is headed to Baltimore. I don't think Tennessee has the dogs. But I think they can run the ball and eat the clock, but I think they still lose. It's like 20 to 10 would be my guess. Because Tennessee's defense is pretty solid. Here, here's my issue. Everyone who's won, I predicted the opposite this past week. I was just talking to you pre-show. I can't pick a team this, this NFL to save my goddamn life this weekend. I thought that I, – I told you I thought the Patriots are going to win just because I don't like – I think Tennessee's streaky, but – 
defense and running travels is what yeah. it always boils yeah. down to. And it's proven in every game yeah, so far. Yeah, but I, I still like Kansas City and Baltimore both in their games. I just do. I Yeah, I well, I'm saying Baltimore's going to win, but I think it's going to be a little closer than people think. I don't know, man. I think Baltimore Tennessee, looks like world beaters right now. They but then put, again, I would say that the, the Saints look like world beaters going into this, and yeah. look what happened today. So they got to put Tennessee, they got to put Derrick Henry on ice for five days. Oh, my God. He's got to be sore today. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most regular. That's a workhorse and a oh giant. Oh, my. He looked like Jerome Bettis in his prime there near the end. It's like, they're just feeding this It's one dude. of those old school things, man. Yeah. yeah. It worked. Uh, so, Tennessee, Baltimore. I think it's a close game. Baltimore wins. Then we got uh, Texans and KC. I think KC is going to destroy them. Yeah. yeah. So, now we go to the NFL today, and Minnesota pulls May out the surprise. Breeze looks super uncomfortable. It they was the were. most uncomfortable I think I've seen Drew Brees. And they were just beating him up, man. He had that one fumble. Yeah. He just couldn't get comfortable back it there. It seems like these two teams play each other every year in the playoffs. Yeah, that's it? true. Yeah. So, yeah. So, they Lions, had like multiple highlights of like past years. Yeah. So. Last year, Minnesota pulled that miracle touchdown yeah. pass out of nowhere. This year, uh, good defense in a running game again for Minnesota. Yeah. They just, like Charles said, they made Brees. Now, oh, super uncomfortable. I hate that annoying Tim Tebow gimmick thing they keep pulling with that quarterback. Yeah. Who is that guy? Uh, Pat Hill or yeah, something? Some hill. Yeah. They, they bring him in. But it works. It seems to work. Yeah. No one no one accounts for this guy. And he, he runs his ass off, too. Yeah, he's he, just, he's he a, like heart. a stocky little dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But New Orleans loses 26 to 20 in overtime. By guess who caught the pass for the Minnesota winning? Kyle Rudolph, yeah, Notre Dame fame. Yeah. Uh, so he wins. So they're saying the monkey's been lifted off of uh, Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins, but I mean, come on, <laughs> that game was won because of the running game and their defense. It wasn't that. It wasn't because of, he had one good pass in overtime. I'm not taking that away from him. But uh, yeah, so it was a good game. I thought uh, a little, little slow in parts, but New Orleans just couldn't. Put like you said, it was just uncomfortable. That's the only way I'd describe is I've never seen Drew Brees just running for his life all the time. And just yeah. and to your point, they were putting in a weird wildcat offense to just kind of get change of momentum. It was just they they put it on New Orleans. And I thought for sure New Orleans looked insane going into the playoffs. I, that they were my pick to go to the bowl. So I I thought for sure New Orleans at home would win. I thought once New Orleans went on the road, they might lose. But at home, they're hard to beat. And, well, apparently not because they yeah. lost. So who do you like? So then that takes Minnesota to San Francisco. Yeah. In San I got to tell you, I think I'm, I'm going to take Minnesota. I like San going Francisco. To. In that I don't game. like San Francisco. Right I think now. it's a grim, grimy game, though. I think it's Garoppolo? Like... So they just made Drew Brees look that uncomfortable. Yeah, but the – Garoppolo? I, San Francisco is more committed to the run than New Orleans is. I don't know. Dude, I'm it's not because of Garoppolo. It's because of the running and the defense. I think I think San Francisco has a better defense than New Orleans, and I think they have a better run game. New Orleans has a run game here and there with that Kamara guy, but they don't commit to it all the time. Yeah. You see, all of a sudden it's shotgun for five plays in a row. Yeah. So I think San Francisco does commit to the run a lot more than New Orleans does. So that will put. But it's gonna be. It's like seventeen fourteen. <laughs> it's gonna be a grimy yeah. low. But it would be great to, for I'll, me. I love this kind of stuff. So they're gonna smack each other in the mouth. They're yeah. gonna, yeah. I gotta love, tell you, I don't believe in the 49ers. So the I'm pads taking, are gonna be a popping. I'm taking sixth seed Minnesota in. Well, in knowing that you Levi took Minnesota State. makes me feel much better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That. I don't think both top seeds in the AFC are gonna make it either. But I can't pick either team that they're mm, playing against. Yeah. Because it just doesn't happen very often. Oh, yeah. You know, there's always that one team that gets upset. So and then tonight, right now, uh, Philadelphia is losing ten to three. Yeah, right? as I, say, I was trying to peep the score. And uh, Carson Wentz, Wentz got went, knocked yeah, out of the game again. Yeah, dude, uh, he's getting he's getting to JJ Watt Gronk territory. <laughs> dude, I'm telling you. Uh, so I don't know what's happening. He can't make it through a season. Uh, but then, so now they got Cade McNown in the game, I, I, forty-year-old Cade McNown. Philadelphia's got a hell of a coach, though. He's made the playoffs three years in a row with just a Dude, broken band garbage. of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> if he had a healthy team, he'd go undefeated. I swear, <laughs> he's a hell of a coach. But uh, right now, it's ten to three. It looks like Seattle probably will win this. What do you think, Charles? I, I think I liked Seattle going into this game. I did, and and that was my which also could be the kiss of death for the Seahawks because I'm terrible this week. But I'm just telling you, I like Seattle going into this game. Better record going into the game. They already beat Philly once this year. I don't know where exactly. I don't know if that was at home or. I whatever. think it was in Seattle. Yeah, so I I just like Seattle in this game. So that will put Seattle to Philadelphia versus Green Bay in December. 
I, in January playoffs in Green just Bay. Just don't worry. Green yeah. Bay. Yeah. Green yeah. Bay. <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> <laughs> just, so if I, if I had Green Bay San Francisco in the championship game, I kind of like Green Bay in that one. Uh, I, I, uh, Green Bay's defense is better. I know they, whatever that game was against the Lions last week, whatever that was, I don't know. I think they were just looking forward and ready to get yeah, their playoffs, yeah. get their week off. But uh, I think that their defense is better than what people think it is uh, for Green Bay. Now, they have no run game. Uh, I, I'll be honest there. And uh, San Francisco does, and I like to preach running. Josh running McCown. Too. I'm sorry. I have a yeah. it down. I'm sorry. They said he's been in the league 17 years, only played two playoff games. <laughs> <laughs> That's, a stellar, That's right? what you call a journeyman. Uh, yeah. So Meanwhile, like Russell Wilson's played like 14 or some yes. shit crazy. So we'll talk more about playoffs next week. Uh, it's shaping up pretty good right now. Second half's about to begin. Obviously, we can't talk about it. There's no 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock game uh, tonight or Monday night. Watch so. the Golden Globes, apparently. Yeah, yeah, watch Ricky Gervais, I guess. He's oh. funny when he hosts. He goes at those people. Yeah. Well, I'm surprised they keep stuff. asking him back. Especially with his right, Now, what did between. you say about yeah, the Yeah, so my point being, so the NFL's um, TV viewership has gone up yet again this past year. And I just thought I'd bring it up because... Everyone is going on and on about how the, the, the controversy with the national anthem years back is supposed to really affect it. As that gets further in the review, no one's going to care. No one cares. It's just yeah. what it boils down to. You got these people like BV Stepdad who are like, you know, oh, forget the NFL and these rich millionaires and all this kind of stuff. I got news for you. Americans still love <laughs> some pro football. You know what I want to do next week, if you can remember, uh, or the week after, probably be the week after, I want you to compare the championship college game Against even the oh, you're saying college to pro numbers kind yeah, of thing? yeah yeah I want to see if college well, I, is coming I don't think college close. is going to be that close because it's a Monday night and it's on ESPN it's not yeah on I, I think NFL kind of clobbers college when it comes to the ratings but I do too maybe I'm wrong but yeah. I, I will compare those in, in the well, coming nonetheless weeks I, I just remember. put that up there because I thought it was so second year straight it's the first time in several years that this has happened and all this kind of stuff so this is why they pay Goodell major money dude crazy. So, the speaking of college, we're going to go right into our updates. We said it a little bit earlier. Bill pretty much locked it up with 20 wins and with two games left. Charles has 17. So, we're fighting for Gabe's number two. 15 and Steve has 7. Now, we had a shot when the Nevada-Ohio yeah, you texted game. me about Nevada-Ohio. We needed Nevada. And, and Nevada beat. lost. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nevada. I, gotta admit, I don't know much about either team in yeah, that scenario. Goddamn Colin Kaepernick's old yeah, team. I don't know. So, once Nevada lost, it put us, it put me out officially. You still kind of had a chance, but then there was some other game that came up. Yeah, in that's that, tough. But, you get in those obscure games that yeah. happen after the first, man. Because I was really. looking at it, I was like, oh, well, Nevada wins. And then <laughs> Steve was running numbers. But then Nevada lost. What we were you done. saying BV was complaining about? Something. He thought he picked Navy. Uh, you recorded a different team for him. It, I mean, in the end, it doesn't matter. He's going to win it all anyways. Oh, yeah. But uh, so maybe we'll go back and look at it. I don't know. It's not that big a deal. Once he won, yeah. if he didn't win, he'd be like, go look at the tapes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we would definitely go back to the tapes if i wrote it down wrong i'm sure yeah but we don't have to now he won so yeah. now it's between me and you now you have clemson i have lsu and i think yes. the other game were the same so it doesn't matter okay so it's basically the championship who gets game number two for number two and gabe poor gabe you're you're just last enjoy <laughs> those big 10 results in third place <laughs> I, I had a lot of big 10 teams though and uh, wisconsin was this close yeah, I got news oh man so close but uh as an update when we're going to compare ratings for the championship game and stuff and see how that goes and see who finishes second. Unfortunately, congratulations to BV. He's pretty much locked up the yeah. second annual Fat yeah, Guys on a Little Podcast. Bull pick him. How many how many games were there to pick? Thirty seven, I want to say. He's somewhere in there, yeah. Yeah. So you know, BV got a little over half, so that's better yeah, than uh, we me and you are pretty much in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> and Gabe just had a terrible time. Yeah. So now we we are still doing a couple year end slash beginning of the decades kind of stuff. And I liked we I covered the games last week I thought were the top ten games that I've played and enjoyed. And now I wanted to go to the movies that I actually went to the theaters and saw. So these movies were I was like, man, I need to get off my ass, go see these. I enjoyed them. I liked them at the movies. Now there are other movies obviously that came out that I didn't see. And but I'm gonna give you my top ten, no particular order, because you know, some of these are debatable in what order they're in, but one so the, these aren't in order, or they are in order? No, they're not in order. Oh, okay. I yeah. put mine in order. Oh, well, and Charles is going to do Netflix next. Since he's more of a Netflix guy than I am, yeah. he's going to tell you what. I, I put mine under a streaming because I had to, for one, I had to change the rule just on the one. So. Oh, okay. And, anyway. 
And I see your Jeff Goldblum's on there, which yeah. I need to talk to you about that when we get there. But uh, I finished that this week too. So, uh, but first off, the, so big, good. the big one, it made like $2 billion. I mean, you're crazy if you don't put it on there. Avengers Endgame. Now, I personally like the Avengers Infinity War better than Endgame. But as far as 2019 goes, it's one of the better movies of the year. Can't argue it. I, I know Martin Scorsese doesn't think it's cinema, but I mean, $2 billion. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, and everyone in that movie is going to be a household name. Is now. that. What? <laughs> For the uninitiated, did that, yes. and I, I guess I'm one of the few, but did You're that the one person yeah, I've heard. exactly did that wrap up the whole thing? Yeah, as far as Avengers goes, for the t- they were you know, when they played the first Avengers movie, there was a scene with Thanos in the credits and stuff like that. So this kind of wrapped up the whole. It was kind of like it wrapped up a certain arc. It wrapped up the, yeah. the Skywalker and trilogy. also yeah, and it's almost like a passing of the torch. So now Chris Prime. Well, it's supposed to be Chris Hemsworth too, but he realizes he can only do Thor movies to uh. make money and art and. Uh, so they're supposed Iron to Iron Man, I can't yeah. think of his name. Mort- Robert Downey Jr. Some reason went more Morton Downey, Downey Jr. <laughs> Downey Jr. They, they were making too much of a movie and they wanted to go on and yeah. do other things too. So uh, where's the Marvel at this point? Like where So now allegedly there's not gonna be a lot of big event Avengers movies anymore. They're gonna be more singular, hmm. but they'll still all tie into each other. So uh, they're all they're different comic books, none of them are Yeah, crossovers. So from here you got the externals, which I'm a huge comic book fan. I barely, this was a 70s Jack Kirby book. I didn't oh. read it. That's the one with the guy know. from uh, uh, Silicon Valley's in it. Yeah. He got ripped God, for he got ripped. And there's a couple guys from Game of Thrones in it, too. Okay. Angelina Jolene's in it. It's almost like a Guardians of the Galaxy where no one really read it. Okay. So they got lucky with Guardians of the Galaxy. That hit. But That was, that just, was a great movie. That was just a really fun Star Wars type yeah. movie. I don't know if Externals going to do the same thing. Are they going to hit Lightning Is it twice? Externals or Eternals? It might be Eternals. I'm sorry. You're, you're right. Eternals, not Externals. Externals is a little yeah, weird. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Eter- Eternals, sorry. So I don't know if they're going to hit it again. And then there's another one. There's the Black Widow movie coming out, yeah. which is a prequel. They've already got the trailer all over the place. That, yeah. yeah. And then there's a, the, a Kung Fu Master one coming out. I don't even know who this guy is. Uh, that was a bad hit. Uh, yeah, wow. <laughs> a Kung Fu Master one. Then they're going to dive deeper into Doctor Strange, which I wasn't. Well, a let big me fan ask a question: Are you are you happy with where the Marvel universe is right now? Or I'd love want... it if they just kept with the main characters. Yeah, I think you're a little. Yeah, I'm getting. A little... I can smell your lukewarmness over here. Well, yeah, well, because here's the thing: so DC's going to make in their movies. Black Adam. I just saw the Rock on Instagram. Yeah, He's Black ready to Adam, film. which is yeah. going to tie into the number two on my list, Shazam. You still got Wonder Woman. They're probably going to so redo Superman. The universe they're stuff. keeping the main characters going where Marvel's kind of putting the main characters on the back burner and bringing it. And I understand they're more diverse female characters up, but it just doesn't appeal to me. Again, these are comics in the 90s I left on the shelf yeah. where I bought the ones I enjoyed. Yeah, yeah. So I, I bring back the X-Men if they can do it the way they want to do it and the Fantastic Four, that'd be great. But right now, the slate they have, I'm just, eh. I mean, I'll see Black Widow, you know. Sure, but you, you're not as looking forward to it as, oh, my God, I want to go see the Avengers. Yeah, movie. yeah, yeah. It's, it's, but, it, you know, it's a slow build, I guess, so we'll see what they do. They made billions of dollars. What, what did some fashion buck from Taylor know? Uh, Shazam is number two on my list. Uh, great movie. Zachary Levi. Did you ever finally see that movie? No, I haven't. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. You really I should just, watch I it. I swear to you, Steve, I'm not doing it to break your balls. I just don't get into comic book movies, man. This one, it feels more, it has like a, I don't want to say Goonies, but like a fun family. Not Everyone tells me I should watch it. I'm not I'm yeah. not here to just break balls. I'm yeah, just yeah saying, I, like, I get it. It doesn't appeal to me. It's yeah, hard well, to explain. It's like Japanese role-playing games. I should like them. <laughs> I just, I should love Zelda. I just don't fucking like it. I understand where you're coming from. Uh, now, of course, the third one in the, in the trilogy, John Wick Chapter yeah, Three, I came can't out. Get enough of those, yeah. Yeah, that was good. John Wick I, movies, man. The ending seems a little wonky for me, but other than that, it's a good movie. Now, of course, the, Godzilla made Steve. <laughs> I'm you're such say, an asshat. Just like Charles and his Arnold Schwarzenegger, Godzilla's <laughs> gonna make. I don't. They can feel Godzilla taking a dump for two hours. I put, <laughs> he's on the Imagine list. Imagine how big a Godzilla dump. <laughs> oh was. man, they take over the whole bar, uh, whole bay and yeah. stuff. Now, this one you put on the list. A lot of people, this movie came and went pretty hard. Made a billion dollars. No, I'm just saying, but it did. A lot of people it criticized it. It did. Yeah, yeah, it didn't have the legs that a true Disney movie. It made a billion dollars. The Lion King. Now, 
I put it John on John Favreau's The Lion King, the live action Lion yeah, King. Yeah, yeah, it made the list, but there wasn't really much else to put in its place. So I was like, well, oh, okay. and I, I it didn't was see, a lack of options. Though. Yeah, yeah, and I didn't see Aladdin, and I didn't see uh, Hobbs and Shaw at the theater, and because I would never put that on this list, yeah. anyways. Now, the one thing I'd say about the movie. It is a remake of the animated one, but you should just see it because how photorealistic it looks. Now, it also hurts the movie because you can't see the emotion yeah, in the animals' yeah. faces. But it did look beautiful. For it's trailer. like watching a National Geographic yeah. documentary. So for me in my artistic slash comic book kind of life, I do love the art and beauty of visuals sometimes. And that's what that movie was. It wasn't because the movie as a whole was great. Now, this one's a guilty pleasure that me and Charles could put loved on here. It. And here. Yeah, Rambo, it. Last yeah. Blood. Closest thing you can get to a horror movie yeah, slash war movie. movie Even Michelle sat through it with me, and she loved it. And even though she cringed on that collarbone scene where he breaks that, uh, she was dude. like, "Oh my god, <laughs> it's so brutal!" Oh my god! But Rambo: Last Blood. Enough said. Uh, we've talked about it a ton. Now, the one I liked, and Charles don't like you this like series. These movies. I like yeah, the. I like Woody Harrelson is hit or miss in some of his stuff because he's in one of the disappointments of the year, yeah. but. uh I do like the Zombieland movies. I enjoy Emma Stone. I enjoy. You always talk them up. You do. You love them. I do. I I think they're fun. They don't take themselves too seriously. I think they're entertaining. In Zombieland, Double Tap is a lot like the first one, but they they had new different zombies. They had new characters. I enjoyed it. I know it wasn't as big a hit as the first one, but I did enjoy it. And then the next, Zombie. Zombie. Jumanji to the next the level. The best rock movies are right here. Yeah. The Rock's career is these movies because the rest of them are hot garbage. Uh, this is a great movie. It, it, kind of the same formula as the first one. Introduced a couple new characters and stuff like that. They leave it up for another one coming up. Uh, so Jumanji, if you get a chance, check it out. Uh, Star Wars: Rise of Skywalker. We've great movie. Talked a shitload about it. Is it the greatest Star Wars movie you'll ever see? Probably not, but it's still pretty decent. Is I, it know. the best Star Wars movie you're gonna get? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right now, yes. Yeah. Uh, and then the last one, this is probably the best one I've seen all year. Is, is this your, I was going to ask you, is your 2019 movie of the year for Steve, is not critic, one. is... Is Joker. Is Joker. Joker. Yeah. So if you had a best Joaquin picture Phoenix. for Steve, it's the Joker. It's the Joker. Uh, I guess the Irishman is supposed to be in the... Uh, is, is, but I didn't see it in theaters, so that's not on my list. Yeah. So I, the Joker is probably huge. Um I'm not, it's not really a comic book movie, is what mm. I want to say to Charles, if he does want to watch it. Yeah, I think you'll enjoy it just be if you like mental health and you know anyone in your <laughs> life who's a little out there, <laughs> and we know quite a few, <laughs> so I, it really is appealing. And then when you th- you slather in a little bit of that comic book layer yeah. on top of it, you know it's up Steve's alley. <laughs> yeah. So and he's, it's acted well. Joaquin, Joaquin, God, I can never say Joaquin. his name. Joaquin. Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah. I can't always get stuck in his name. Uh-huh. Does a great job. I mean, he plays a crazy person. Yeah, pretty, he's yeah, going to see some awards for that. So. Oh, and then Adam Sandler heard too, but we'll see. Yeah, I don't, that movie does look kind of good to me. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know what it's about. I, uh, black it's market gem dealer like, or yeah, something. Yeah, like, but he's also like hustling, like gambling on stuff. Yeah, and somehow I am kind of in. To it. I'll somehow be Kevin Garnett's in yeah, it. Yeah, and I'm like, and he oddly is like backing him. Some I don't know. I'm kind of into it. I gotta sell it. Yeah. Now the two biggest letdowns of yeah. the year that I actually physically saw at the theater. Charles saw one of them with oh. me. Oh, my What's the movie Midway? I, <laughs> I had high hopes for this movie. Ooh, thank it you for did, that phone call, Steve. It did make a lot of money, but did it? Yeah, uh, it was number one that weekend, but. Oof. It's bad. I don't get it. Nick Jonas and all, it was just terrible. I didn't. Midway <laughs> was sucked. bad. I don't know. I'm a little shocked to see your other disappointment. Yeah, just because the fr- I, you know what it is. I think it, I'm talking about Lego Movie Two. Uh, it has a oh. subtitle, but did you see the second one? No. Did you see the first one? I saw the first one. The first, first one was fun. so unique and so fun. Uh. And this one, it was a little bit more of the same, but it just. It didn't hit that same lightning in a bottle that the first one did. I was a little shocked. And it's almost too much Chris Pratt because like there's two Chris Pratt characters in it. One's like futuristic Chris Pratt, and one's current. It's like uh, I don't need more Chris Pratt. Yeah, I mean let's ease up on the Chris Pratt. So those are my. He's likable. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Lego Movie Two is not a bad movie. It just didn't live up the hype that the first one. Now it's still a little bit better than Lego Batman. Not by much though, but th- there you go. There's some ten. Look at the ten movies. Steve's I enjoyed movie this year. of 2019 is The Joker. The Joker is probably yeah. the one because I think that would appeal to comic and non-comic fans. Uh, but the Good Time Family movie that everyone should probably see is probably Jumanji. Yeah, I think a lot of now I didn't put Frozen Two on here. 
If you have a little girl in your family, just go see it. You don't need me to say anything on there. Uh, what other well, anime? It's your top ten. I mean, just yeah. you don't got to justify it. It's well, just I'm your just top saying, 10. yeah, it's not a bad movie, but it's not overall yeah. any kind of guy or anything. You probably want to sit through that. I'm trying to think of the other animated movies. There was more than just Frozen two that came out. But, uh, well, Lion King was one. I think Aladdin came out this year. I have not seen Aladdin. It is out on uh, Disney Plus uh, tomorrow or Tuesday. Tuesday comes out on that. I was starting to look at that. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do with Disney Plus here coming up soon. Yeah, and I got two or three years. I bought her. I forgot. Did you already buy that many years? I think it was two years. Some deal with Holly. Michelle had to deal with the Disney. Oh, okay. I don't don't know if it's one or two years. I need some content. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's my wrap up for the movies at the theater. And Charles, what is your movies? Well, my mine. So you put me down here as Netflix, and I had to just change it to streaming for one show. And I'll kind of uh, yeah, I'll talk fine. about my you caveat. Put yeah. in the stream. I just yeah. know you don't watch. So Amazon. these, I, I watch a ton of Netflix as we chronicle on this show all the time. Looks like the Seahawks just scored. Looks like it's gonna be seventeen to six, Seattle. So I'm gonna. I put mine in order. I went from my favorite to my uh, my number ten. To, so I'll go to ten to one. Oh, okay. So the number ten show that I, I, I really liked is the movies that made us. It came out of nowhere. We 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 know we've chronicled how I love the toys that made us. Yes, yes. And then I thought this was a great addition because Steve literally right before this came out, Steve goes, "I don't know what they do next." Yeah, and then they out broke out movies. I thought it was really smart that they do it. I like the way that they do the film. I bet any money they do TV series next. Like I'm TV all for it. I like just I can't get enough. Stuff, any of the, ma- the made us stuff, I'm into. It's yeah. good. And they do a great job with filming it. I got a lot of stand-up on here. Sebastian Maniscalco, Stay Hungry. So I just something about that guy. I just don't like his face. Dude, I love his stand-up. He is hilarious. I was turned on to him this year with all the Netflix stuff that they have, but this is the one they released for this year, so I put this on my list for top ten. Uh, then, of course, <laughs> we go into the British Baking Show. Season 7 came out this year. It's got to be on the list. Steve joked at me when he said, I got to put this up here. I had to have a British <laughs> Baking Show somewhere. Into that Game Changers documentary. That's a yeah. great one that's on yeah, Netflix. We've said a lot about, about that. Yeah, yeah. you got to watch that. The other show that and, and I went through my already watched stuff to kind of aggregate this thing. Yeah. Last Chance You. I can't say enough about it. BV got turned onto it from me. This show's great. It's about that junior college. It's the one that's in Indiana, or in, in, in it's uh, um, season two. And it's just, it's so good, man. You just got to watch that show. Last Chance You is great. This is the one that made me change because I, I love the world according to Jeff Goldblum. Yes. I didn't watch it initially because I was like, I don't get it. And then Steve kind of told me about it. And I said, and I, every Friday, I got to check out what <laughs> yeah. Jeff Goldblum's up to. Yeah, I think it's he over is now, so, is it over? I, nine episodes. I think that's all. Oh, God. Got. I'm so annoyed because I can't get enough. He did bikes when he was in Detroit. He yeah. did. Oh, the show is so fa- he is so quirky to look at and just yeah. uh man, Jeff Goldblum. I was also shocked he did an episode on coffee. He doesn't like coffee, which if I were gonna get an episode on it. Yeah, it's fantastic. If you have Disney Plus, all these other ones are gonna be Netflix, but if you got Disney Plus, I know we all came to it for Mandalorian, but check out the Jeff Goldblum show. It's great. Uh, th- this is this year. Dave Chappelle's Sticks and Stones was this year. Totally it's gotta be in your top ten. Yeah, it's gotta be up there. One of the weird ones. This is the one of the weird Charles off the beaten path one. Instant Hotel. This is the one I was talking about where they get the four people with the Airbnbs and they all compete to be the top Airbnb. It was an Australian show that mm-hmm. Netflix brought over. Love this show. Super good show called Instant Hotel. One of the other shows that people are not as hip to that they need to be is Peaky Blinders. It is one of the best shows on Netflix. It trumps any of the Orange is the New Black. It's got Killian Murphy in it. It's got Tom Hardy. Season five of that show premiered this past year. Great show. And then these, the, 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 this next one is a show that Netflix produced. I didn't know I was into until I watched it. It's called Blown Away. It's the glass blowing show that they do the competition where they get six glass blowers mm-hmm. together and then they try to do like different art installations with it. This show's great, man. I can't wait for season two. It's, it's right up there with one of my favorite stuff. And then my favorite thing on Netflix this past year was West Side vs. the World. This, this I don't remember you talking about. This is the power lifters with oh, West Side yes, Barbell. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, now I do. It is so good, man. These are a bunch of Neanderthals. I love thing. strength training. <laughs> I talk about it all the time. This is where Steve bikes my balls about Arnold and all this stuff. <laughs> I can't get enough Your of Your Godzilla. <laughs> dude, yeah. My Godzilla is, is a bunch of animals just lifting weights. <laughs> I love it. 
West Side vs. the World is the best thing on Netflix in 2019. Uh, and I, I kind of mirrored Steve's letdowns. I, I've talked about on the show, I thought The Crown took a step back this season with the recasting and then the, we, the weird way that they did the storytelling was weird. Didn't like that. And then the other one that was a bit of a disappointment is called Breakfast, Lunch, and Dinner. There's a, a, a big chef named David Chang who was kind of doing, he's a big Anthony Bourdain guy. Yeah, I've seen the previous one. And he went around with Seth Rogen in Vancouver, and he went with Chrissy T. I I didn't like it. I don't know. Mm. It just goes to show you, like, I'm a huge Anthony Bourdain guy. Not everyone can do what Anthony Bourdain did, is what I would argue. So that's my top ten of 2019. How come Witcher isn't in your letdown? (laughs) It should be. I'm going to go back. I'm not done with the Witcher yet. And one last question. Where's the Irishman not on there? The Irishman isn't on there, because I kind of consider that more of a movie stuff and then quite frankly i lo- i'd watch a lot of that other stuff i'd watch west side versus the world <laughs> over anything I watched what about year. was it was the other big one bird box or the, i don't uh, know yeah. and what about stranger- bird box i think was 2018 i don't watch stranger things and you don't watch stranger things yeah. all right so this, this is, is my top 10 yeah, that's cool and the it's number a, one it's because you know neanderthals have- in a gym in columbus ohio <laughs> straight moving weight and iron i love it i it's can't cool it because your list is different from what you know most mainstream Netflix lists are going to have oh, it's Witcher, good. Stranger Things. No, uh, no, 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 no. It's going to have Charles the Irishman. Obscure. Yeah, so this is some, this is some deep dive yeah. Netflix. And I got to uh, tell you, the best original Netflix show to come out was that Blown Away show. I, I, it's one of those things where like these people are making these things out of glass. Like yeah. it was super riveting. I just, I loved it. Also, again, with that Netflix stuff, 4K delicious. It looked beautiful and all that kind of stuff. Shot really well. And, oh, man, I love that show. I can't wait for season two to come out. So what I was going to ask you about Jeff Goldblum. So I, I don't know. I thought Nine was the last one. And then they're going to go to I'm a new bummed season. about that. I like that but, show a lot. So, so next season, I was thinking about this. What are some topics you'd like to see him cover? Ugh, geez, off the top of my head, I don't know. Like, he should do, like, a football one for yeah. sure. I was thinking, because it kind of goes off the RV one. Hunting and fishing life. Oh, right? yeah, that's true. Because he said he never yeah. camped as a kid or anything. Yeah, that would like be Like some funny. of those hardcore hunting dudes yeah, and just get him in there with that's that. That's good. Imagine him all orange just standing. Yeah, because like, I guess you could say like tailgating was already kind of covered in the one episode of the yeah. barbecue one. And that that or show, maybe man. beer, beer life. Like yeah, you could definitely beer. do beer and stuff like that. I just want to think Jeff Goldblum and everything. <laughs> just talk about stuff. Just uh, watching his mannerisms. And, ah, yeah. <laughs> like, he's, he's what got me in the Korean barbecue because he went on that YouTube channel with that girl. <laughs> I was like, you know, I've never had Korea barbecue. He, I feel like he comes to everything with like he's as old as our dad. Yeah, you realize he comes that. At, like he's never seen yeah, him before. It's just so his good, son needs man. a haircut. Jesus, uh, Charlie. Yeah. That- <laughs> <laughs> it's so. great, man. Yeah, the world according to Jeff Goldblum is a gem on Disney Plus. One of those ones you weren't looking for, but man, they nailed it on that one. Give Jeff Goldblum a show, just let him go. You know, great stuff. Yeah. So there we go. There's Charles. Is a little bit of an odd list, a little bit outside the box. Uh, you know. Any kind of list Steve made is going to be heavy on big monsters, war, or comic books. <laughs> Any series Charles makes is going to be weird weightlifting documentaries and some, oh something God. British. Yeah. Something British would be <laughs> yeah, in there. I love it. Uh, so there we go. The, so 2020 is going to bring up some new stuff for us. We just got to wait and see. Now, wrestling's back with a little bit of news. This yeah, week. I saw. Because my UFC stuff, my pugilism stuff is pretty quiet. So yeah. it, it was good to see you came the, back with The this. first thing in the three minutes of wrestling that everyone loves. We've covered it before. WWE 2K20. This game cannot buy a it's break. A dumpster fire. So I guess there's a glitch in the game. There's a most games have an internal count counter and stuff like that. It's got like a 2K glitch. Once the year flipped in real life to 2020 in your Xbox, the date flipped. It glitched half the games and it wouldn't Why? work. I don't know. I, I didn't read the whole article, but yeah, a lot of the games blanked out, and the only way to get it was to go into your Xbox to set the date back in your wow. Xbox. They've since patched it, I guess, but that game just can't catch a break. <laughs> I swear, it is a huge dumpster fire. WWE 2K20, don't buy it. It's just a mess. So glad they changed developers. Yeah, it worked out so well for them. Uh, now, they, sometimes you see articles that tell you their number one segments. And Vince McMahon and stuff, he's still stuck in, like, the 80s. They're doing one of those over-the-top wedding wedding things. So Rusev's a wrestler who's married to a girl named Lana in real life. Okay. They're doing a bit where Lana's cheating on him with Bobby Lash, this other wrestler. And so they even did the uh, the giant cake and the fake wedding. Like, they've oh done it a thousand times. Mm-hmm. It's terrible. Everyone hates it. 
Number one rated segment on the Raw. Of course. It is. <laughs> it's like, just like that weird one that Gabe, like with that guy with the mental health thing. Yeah, oh, yeah, my God. So the worst segment I've seen in years is, is the top rated segment. What everyone's looking for. Because it closed Raw last week. I'm like, they're closing with this bed. I just went to bed. I was like, <laughs> and then I saw an article saying it's the most highest rated segment on Raw in the past three weeks. So there you go. That's why they do these weird, terrible storylines because people watch people them. are into it. Yeah. yeah, not me. It's terrible. Now, Arne Anderson was recently. I can explain this to why why he's had a resurgence. But he was fired from the WWE. Daniel Tosh. What? Daniel Tosh of Tosh.0 on Co- Comedy Central, one of the okay. most popular shows on Comedy Central. Yes. One of the he, only shows left on Comedy Central worldwide. He always is calling out Arne Anderson all the time. All the time on the show. I'm talking to you, Arn, all the time. Like, if he has a wrestling bit, it's him calling out Arn Anderson. He did a whole call-in thing where he did nothing but rip on Arn Anderson. And now here it is. All of a sudden, Arn Anderson's got a resurgence on AEW. I'm like, okay. Well, and some of that is also, uh, Arn Anderson, was he was a backstage producer for WWE for 17 okay. years. And he got fired six months ago. So then AEW scooped him up, too. Yeah, but he couldn't. He was in a no-compete clause for six months. So he couldn't show up on TV. Or so anything. he had to wait until the end of that. Yeah. Hello. So now you see Arn Anderson is the manager. So what we're talking about is on AEW, Arn Anderson is now part of it, and he is Cody Rhodes' manager. And apparently Tosh.0 is yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah. So he'll, he'll probably... Be, he'll be, uh, there's a segment coming on Comedy Central yeah, with yeah. him on it, too. What about him to his wife, though? I thought his wife was his manager or whatever. No, they pulled her away to do something with Boy, Awesome the Kong chick and the chick stuff, wrestling. Yeah. So she hasn't really been Have, with him. It sounds like you're up to date on the AEW product. No, are I only, you? I only caught that article. I haven't watched it in three weeks. <laughs> okay, I was like, wow. <laughs> I see some highlights here and there on YouTube every once in a while, but that's it. Now, Seamus, are you familiar with Seamus? Yeah, he's the red-haired dude. He was at the Notre Dame game. Yeah, he, he was out for almost a year. I don't what know. What did he do? I, it's something to do with his knee, I think. He hurt it pretty, pretty bad. Pretty serious if he's out for a year. The one thing these wrestlers do when they're out for a long period of time, they just work out like mad. Oh, they come back just juice, except if you're an AEW wrestler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what AEW WWE do. wrestlers come back jacked. But. Seamus came back to SmackDown. I saw. I didn't watch the show, Every but I saw some popping. He had a little bit of pudge on him, yeah. and you know he was pale, but he's still a big rip. The pudge is gone. He stripped the fat out, and he's oh, just like God. the veins. The yeah. he's still no tan. He's still pale white as hell. But he's solid. Oh, it's like, Jesus. Yeah. He got. Remember when Triple H was a little pudgy and then he disappeared and came back and was like, oh Triple my God. H is on the juice yeah, side. Yeah. Well, Seamus got the same juice and he's back, which is a surprise because usually they keep those guys till Royal Rumble to bring them back. Oh, okay, like a big reveal. Yeah, like a secret entrance, you know. Just goes to show you that that product is just struggling. Like, we need yeah. some kind of pop. So that's the big wrestling news. The Dame is still a train wreck. Uh, the best segment on Raw is. Unfortunately, the, the worst, it's the wedding one. And Steve's calling out Arne Anderson. And Arne Anderson is Cody Rhodes' manager, and Seamus is jacked. Yeah, wow. Apparently, his rehab was roids. <laughs> so there we go. Now, let's look at some rapid fire. Now, this, there's not a lot this week. Again, it's January. We're going we're gonna to slow down a little bit. But next, uh, but the first up in the theaters is, the, I, I think this is a remake of The Grudge. The Grudge is back again. This is that bad horror movie with the little girl comes out of the TV, I think it is. I don't know how many times I'm going to make this movie. Uh, I'm a no on The Grudge. I haven't seen it once. I'm not. I'm a, no thanks. The Charles Rule, as you said, horror movie, it's a no. <laughs> <laughs> the next up is uh, Like a Boss. This is Tiffany Haddish and the girl from uh, Neighbors that was Seth Rogen's wife. I can't, she shows up in a lot of comedies. They're two females that are in a business together. I don't know, like a cupcake business or whatever. Selma Hayek is the evil girl that buys out her company. They try to get revenge. I just gave you the whole plot. Uh, like a boss, I will not be seeing in theaters, but probably watch on DVD with my wife because she likes those kind of things. So I'm a no. Tiffany Haddish is literally off of the Kevin Hart block. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. she's at that point where Kevin Hart couldn't get a real good movie. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. she yeah. is the female Kevin Hart. I'm a no. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Next one is Underwater, TJ Miller and the girl from uh, Kristen Stewart. Yeah, they uh, just showed a preview. It was seven miles deep. Yeah, the... it looks like a horror movie underwater, but it's ready PG-13. Oh. So even if I was into it, I wouldn't go see it. So I'm in no on underwater. I'm a huge no on this. It looked like a turd. I'm Kristen Stewart. No. All right. Now, new on Blu-ray this week. Uh, this one is such a big one coming out that we, w- once a week on the weekends, I bring up the Myers ad to see what's on sale because my wife only shop at Myers. I don't know why. Ask her. So I make the grocery list of the meals I want to make. 
in the grocery section of the Meyer ad, the big Joker ad right there. It, usually they keep that for a different section of the ad. So the Joker is coming out this week. Uh, this is Steve's recommended movie of the year, so I will be getting a copy oh, of yeah. it. So I'm a yes on the Joker. I'll borrow Steve's copy. <laughs> and there we go. Now, ironically, the guy who's going to play the next Batman, Robert Patterson, Patterson, is coming out in this weird black and white movie with William Defoe called The Lighthouse. I think he jerks off in this. Yeah, it's he? I don't know what's happening in this. It's an artsy weird. I think so yeah, I'm a no. I have no interest in seeing. Only this. if he jacks off in it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> then I might be interested, yeah, but yeah, um, I don't know nothing about him. No. And this one I put on here because it's hilarious. Steven Seagal, straight to DVD, he, Beyond the as Law. As opposed to Above the Law, he's it's Beyond, beyond it. the Is law. Bergeron getting this? Did you ask him? I don't know. Will he have pants on? Yeah. I'm not sure. I didn't ask him. I should have. This is a right to DVD Steven Seagal special. I'm a no. This guy's terrible. I'm a no. Yeah. I don't know. So you got that weird painted on hair still? Yeah. Now, go. let's go to streaming. Now, Netflix has a, a series called Explained. It's like small documentary so they have a whole series coming up just based on sex. So it's Sex Explained, it's called. Okay. Uh, it's already out, actually, on the Netflix. Uh, I might catch it, so I'm a maybe. I, the Explained shows are very good. You turned me on to those. They're, that's a good yeah. series. But I, I, what are they going to explain, how a boner works? I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I'm a no, probably. Uh, next one is a documentary. This is a documentary on college cheerleading. It's called oh, Cheer. I'm definitely out. Yeah. So you don't want to know how Phil Dumphy <laughs> got his start. Uh, cheer, cheer on Netflix. I'm a no. Cheerleading is not a sport. It is not a sport if you need another sport. I'm a no. Mm, good point. Uh, this one's coming to Amazon. Philip K. Dick's Electric Dreams. Now, Philip K. Dick allegedly was a big sci-fi writer, and he wrote a lot of short stories. So this is a series of 10 episodes all based on each one on a short story from Philip K. Dick. Uh, I'm a no. I don't know what the hell that is. I'm good. <laughs> I accept your explanation, but I'm a no. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, so that's the only new thing I can find coming to Amazon this month. Everything else is just recycled movies and stuff. Uh, now, this week, uh, the streaming home of Aladdin with Will Smith and all them. I am a yes because I wanted to see this. I am a yes because I'll check it out for sure. I also have to justify six ninety nine a month for yes, my Disney+. I mean, plot. I figured, and if you're telling me I have no more Jeff Goldblum, I've got to find something. Yeah, so uh, Aladdin, I mean, for free on Disney, I'll watch it. And then also coming out, it looks like a documentary, One Day at Disney. about. Are they going to follow him or something throughout yeah, the park? I, I could I be think, interesting. Yeah, he kind of gives his opinion on what it's been like to work for 20 mm, plus years for I Disney. Could, I might watch that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd probably watch it. One Day at Disney, Bob Iger, I'm a yes. I'm a yes, too. I I like that behind the scenes kind of stuff. I do. Yeah. And that is all for rapid fire this week. Now what's happening when people punch people in the face? Yeah. And I, I put this on here and like we talked about a little bit earlier, I alluded to it's really quiet. It's weird that on the 18th is a big pay-per-view of the return of Conor McGregor versus Donald Cerrone. But he, he's weird. He's not talking any trash about Donald Cerrone at all. He won't say anything bad about him. It's really, Mm -hmm. It's really kind of odd and un-Conor McGregor-like, I would say. Mm. But he's going after Khabib still and talking about the BMF belt, about the Jorge Masvidal stuff. But. Why are you talking about McGregor? That's one thing in Game Changers I didn't like. The McGregor-Diaz thing. Oh, where he's talking about how he was eating red meat right yeah, up to Yeah, and then it. they yeah. acted like Diaz just came out and dominated. Diaz barely won yeah, that fight. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, sorry. That's no, I, and, and that's just... just uh, there's a lot of jokes. And didn't they have a rematch and McGregor won? Yeah. <laughs> What about that part? They forgot that part? <laughs> well, you guys didn't fit their narrative. Yeah, so anyways, go ahead. Um, but no, I just put on here, it's a quiet time. We're going to get the fight. I wanted to live stream our commentary on mm. the 18th, and, and maybe BV can join us or something like that. I don't All know right. how he's into it or whatever, but other than that, it's just quiet. The only thing I was, like I said, I just brought up is that he's not talking any trash to him, which is really odd to me. Yeah, I, I kind of miss the trash talking, the little, little bastard. That makes him fun. Uh, so and then in the news, we're gonna wrap up some stuff here. Did you check? Uh, now, did you I like, watch this? Did I you loved like, the first Quiet Place movie. Okay, so the Quiet Place Two is coming out. There's a trailer for it. Uh, it looks pretty good. It looks real good. They dude. got a baby in a suitcase yeah. and a whole thing and uh, soundproof like suitcase yeah. so the baby don't make noise. And it looks like humans are kind of turning on each other and 
So your boy from Peaky Blinders. Kelly Murphy, it? yeah. Uh, so Quiet Place 2, the trailer's on YouTube. You guys get a chance. It looks Check good, it out. dude. It looks good. Uh, it, Is John Krasinski right this one like he did the first one? Direct, I think, oh, yeah. Oh, man. I mean, so he's gonna that catch first one was him. good, man. It was a surprise hit. It yeah. really was. And I, I even enjoyed it. I mean, yeah. he's not a big horror movie fan, but it was good. I, uh, I wouldn't even call it like a horror movie as much as like suspense kind of thing. I don't know how yeah, you. What well, do you? Giant monsters eating people. Kind of I know, like a but I'm just saying like it was very suspenseful. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. So, uh, yeah, Quiet Place. I definitely go check it out. Trailers are out. If you haven't watched them, go ahead and watch them. Now we were just talking about we need some more content, and uh, you, this is content you're not going to want to watch on Disney Plus. Yeah. But WandaVision is the is the show going to be based on Vision and uh, uh, the Scarlet Witch of Avengers. Uh, so, and this show is supposed to lead right up into the new Doctor Strange movie. So somehow this show is going to be tied into the new Doctor Strange movie that comes out right after it. Uh, it, was, it looks like it's set in the fifties. It's weird. Like, what is this? Scarlet, is that an aesthetic thing they're going for? Well, no, no. It's Scarlet Witch. Uh, one of her powers is mind manipulation and stuff like that. Uh, There's a big storyline. House of God, Comics and Nerd coming. <laughs> it's called House of M. It was called. What happened? Scarlet Witch. She's she's actually a mutant, but in the movies. They didn't have the rights to X Men at the time, so she's just kind of like a superhero is born kind of that way. So she's just very, 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 very powerful. And what happens is she alters reality. She she has like a stroke or something, and her mind gets set loose, and it it alters all the post apocalyptic. So they're kind of predicting that this is kind of the same thing where she her mind and powers went loose, and in in her mind it, it seems like it's the manipulating. This. Yeah. So, anyways, that's just speculation. We don't know, but it was slated for two thousand twenty one. Disney has moved it up to 2020. And also, John Favreau has confirmed that you will get The Mandalorian by fall. He confirmed yeah. that on Twitter. And also, Winter, uh, Winter Soldier and The Falcon will be 2000. So three big series are supposed to hit. You're probably only interested in one out of the three mm -hmm. uh, this year on Disney+. Plus. I, I think my Disney Plus, I'm going to go back and watch the Clone Wars as we talked about. I got to do mm -hmm. all that. Should I watch Star Wars Rebels? Do you watch that at all? What is watch that? the Clone Wars first. Uh, it, one leads into the other? Yeah, Star Wars Rebels takes place after the Clone Wars. Because Ahsoka is in Star Wars Rebels too, but she's, she's the main star of, of They Clone build Wars. her up to the Rebels, Ahsoka. And, yeah, and the Rebels, she's more of kind of in and out, but it'll make more sense to you if you watch the Clone Wars first. Mm -hmm. I forget the timeline in Rebels. I think it is... Right before or right after Return of the Jedi? I could be wrong. I'm not sure. I, I can't wait, remember this time. No, wait. I'm sorry. Before right before the, the New Hope. A New Hope. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah. like, wait, what? No, <laughs> I'm sorry. I had my... I, it's so annoying that things can't just go in order. Yeah, you know? well, as I was going to say, because I'm like, she would be another Jedi then. Like, wait, what? Well, the way Star Wars Rebels ends, you understand why you don't. those Jedis don't show up in the trilogy. Oh, okay. And I want to ruin it for you, but... Rebels, now again, just like Clone Wars, the first season of Rebels is a little slow. Oh, Jesus. There's five seasons, I believe, or four. It really gets good after that. But the first season, and then it picks up. So, I know I always put that disclaimer out there, <laughs> the but it's so true, unfortunately. Uh, so. You stick with it because it says Star Wars on it. And, <laughs> and you were But Star Wars Resistance is an animated series. Don't watch it. It's dog shit. It's totally dog shit. The only two I should watch is Clone Wars and Rebels, right? Yeah, yeah. Resistance is terrible. Uh, okay, so now in other news, uh, my daughter, Holly, 15, loves TikTok. Oh, my God. TikTok is great. Oh, yeah. Peppa Pig. It's kind of like Vines, uh, just stupid little videos of teenagers doing stupid shit. The U.S. Army has banned their troops from using TikTok. Why, I wonder? TikTok is a Chinese-made oh, wow. application. They feel that they could be data mining uh, oh, wow. military personnel if they get Jeez. on there. So the, the Army's not the only one. Uh, the Navy has banned it. There's like two or three. It's basically military. the military. Yeah. Now, but they don't ban it on their own phones. Like, Justin can do it his own phone, but I guess some of the military get their get own. issued phones. Issued sure, phones. Yeah. But how much money are we spending at the military? Everyone gets their own military yeah, phone? I don't know. Jeez. But, yeah, so TikTok, Holly will never join the Army now because you're not allowed to have TikTok. I'm pretty sure it wasn't high on her list. And have you heard, are you familiar with the, the Uncharted movie? Yeah, it's a disaster. Like, seven different directors, yes. and it's a whole thing. But it's supposed to be in motion. Now, there was a director tied to it this year, but what happened is Tom Holland, who's going to star, which is totally miscast yeah. as Nathan Drake, was going to play Nathan Drake, but he has to, he has to film the new Spider-Man movie this summer. So they wouldn't be able to film Uncharted till the fall. 
So the one director they had tied to it got pissed and left. Mark Wahlberg was originally tied to this. I guess they've been trying to make this movie for 10 years. Jesus. He was originally tied to it to be Nathan Drake. But now he's gotten so much older, they're going to make him be the old oh, friend wow. guy. And Tom Holland's coming in to play the young Nathan Drake. So this is supposed to take, this movie's supposed to take place before the games. I don't know. I, it's, it seems miscast. It seems like a weird time frame. It seems like a complete just disaster of a movie. Yeah. Uh, it, it, Sony's really wanting to get it going. Uh, but Why don't they give Kratos a game? Why don't they get like a God of War game or something? Movie, like you mean? Yeah, movie, right? Yeah, it so, seems like he's more fit. Yeah. I mean, all you got to do is get a muscle body. Put The Rock. Yeah, put make him on. Yeah. The Rock is Kratos? That'd make yeah. a billion dollars. <laughs> Who wouldn't like... go see that? And that's unless they made a PG and it was like that Hercules movie. Oh, yeah. No, no, then it'd be like, oh, who cares? But uh, so there's your news. Uh, Uncharted movie still kind of in production. Ugh. Army doesn't like TikTok. Quiet Place 2 is coming. And WandaVision is coming to Disney Plus along with a couple other shows this year. So please hang in there because uh, Disney needs all your monies. <laughs> yeah. Even though their stock was down today, $1.21. Oh. Everyone was down. I don't know. If Trump must have did something to piss everybody off. He killed a general. <laughs> it's from an Iranian general. Yeah. Now, on New Year's Eve, I did stay awake, Charles. I made oh. it to midnight. But congratulations! I, I turned on Fox. Okay, I was watching Steve Harvey. I did doze off for about twenty five minutes. Know, okay, but the one thing I was going to tell you, and I don't know if you noticed this, Fox has no idea what to do with Gronk. Do they have him signed to an exclusivity deal or something? They he must. Like... Well, yeah, because they had him on their Thursday night games. And he didn't know what to say. They didn't know what to do with him. I don't know if you saw him on those pregame. I know he stuff. spiked that head. Is that what you're going to talk about? Yeah. So even, but even up until that point, they had no idea what to do He's with him. He's just there. They would go out to the crowd like, and here's Party Man Brown. He'd just start dancing around. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know what to make him say. Super awkward. What, yeah, it made no sense. Maria Menundez, whatever her name is, she's out in the crowd with him. What do you think, Gronk? He's like, oh, pick things up, put them down. I don't know. <laughs> oh, so he God. didn't know what to say. It was Fox has no idea what to do with this guy. <laughs> I'm fully convinced of it. Stick him on SmackDown. Make him uh, yeah, announce or something. Sure, yeah. He'll fit in with those goons on SmackDown. Just stick him over there. They don't know what to do with Gronk. He's a terrible, he's not an analyst. They try to ask him his opinion on games. He doesn't know. He doesn't, yeah, he doesn't barely know who's playing. Gronk may want to have to go back to the football. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> this is this year off, but. Well, I thought he didn't have to because I thought he didn't spend his money. Or yeah, whatever. he may have enough money. You don't yeah. have to. But maybe go into movies or something or a TV show or put him on a reality show. Side note, though, how good does that Lego show look like coming from Fox? I don't know nothing about it. With Will Arnett hosting? It's oh, con- well, they got to build it. Yeah, Lego yeah, Build that, Masters? Great. Yeah. And have you seen? It's on TLC. I can't think of the name of it. Uh, look it up. Uh, it's some kind of foot doctor thing. Have you seen mm. this? Oh my God! He's, He's like pimple popper for feet. It's terrible. Yes. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oh that. my! This one lady had a foot, and she had a corner of fungus, and it took up all her foot. And they showed the operation. They numbed it. It was like hairy, had chunk. Oh my God! They showed him cut it out the <laughs> foot. They took it off, and all you saw was like the flesh and stuff. Oh Jesus! This other woman had six toes. What? And they showed him. They took medical scissors and was cutting. Oh. Me, Holly, and Michelle were like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Christ. No, I don't know that show. Oh, check that one out. Oh, I, can't, I wish I knew the name. It's Foot Emergency or something. It's oh, on TLC. I watch that. It made us all cringe. Yeah. Holly was taking videos, sent it to her friends. She's like, oh, my God, I can't <laughs> take it. It is some rough stuff. So if you get a chance on TLC. Wow. Oh, yeah. So. All right, so anything else you want to add to No, that? no, I'm yeah, good so, with the foot cuts. I'm yeah, good. yeah, I'll have some protein with your foot cuts. Uh, so, of course, you can catch us on Apple iTunes or Google Play or Spotify. You can catch us on FatGuysLittlePodcast.com or Facebook or YouTube on all our different areas. Yeah, we're uh, all over the place. Yeah, give us likes and submissions or uh, whatever. Whatever. Yeah. We're all there. We always like to hear from everybody. You'll see uh so I do have a clip up on our Instagram of Holly and her friends and her ping pong action. Oh, yeah. It's pretty bad. But uh, until next week, this is Steve and Charles. Yeah, catch you later.